Hey up, it's Steve from that old Yorkshire Geek, and welcome to episode 80, blimey, of Friday Night Appointment with Fear. And this week we're doing Alien, as you could probably tell from that uh, that uh, intro thing, <laughs> whatever they're called. Uh, so yes, we're doing Alien from 1979, the original Ridley Scott directed Alien. Uh, this is the director's cut we're going to be looking at. Uh, where's me... Uh... I've uh, just managed to squeeze in watching the special features from the the, the box set. Um, I forgot what it's called. Hang on, the um, uh, the Beast Within Making of Alien. A very good, very good documentaries on this. The, the, I think they were on the, the DVD box set as well. Um, on YouTube, no one can hear you scream. Says Sci-Fi Quest. I hope you can hear me. Because <laughs> last time I started the show. Uh, I was muted because we were on the wrong microphone because I'm stupid. Anywho, uh, so I'm just going to check. I'm going to check. Sorry, I've got to check. Hang on. Right, I'll check on my phone. So you'll hear my stupid voice in a minute, fingers crossed. I've got to check. Yes, I am going. Yes, you can hear me. You can hear me. Right. Oh, what's that there? Nothing. Right, never mind. <laughs> uh, right, right. Oh, South Africa can hear fine. Right. So, uh, Alien from 1979, directed by Ridley Scott, uh, written by uh, Dan O'Bannon, uh, Bowtie and everything, and Ronald Shusset, from the original idea from, by Dan O'Bannon, uh, um, um, starring Tom Skerritt, Sigourney Weaver, uh, Veronica Cartwright, Harry Dean Stanton, John Hurt, Ian Holm, Yafet Kotto. Uh, and also the fellow that plays the alien, whose name I can never remember, uh, Balaji Badejo. Um, the name like that, you'd think, you know, he it was, it was of, uh, yes, he's uh, of um, African extraction, I imagine, uh, but apparently he had a North London accent, so probably all there, go blimey, Gavner, I'm the alien, <laughs> uh, I imagine. Uh, and Helen Horton did the voice of Mother. Uh, and somebody else played the alien sometimes as well. Eddie Powell uh, or sometimes played the alien. Uh, and according to his picture here uh, on IMDb, it looks like he's also played the devil in The Devil Rides Out, but that's a tale for another fee uh, another time. Uh, double feature? No, we're not doing double features. Right, so anyway, where were we? Um, a great musical score from uh, um, um, Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, although he did get a bit miffed because they, they used some of his other music, I think, for the end of the film um, from another film he'd done, which I can't remember. Was it Freud? Something like that. Uh, and they used some different music, uh, which got him angry. Um, but anyway, that's by the by. Um, triple it is then. No. So I'll just do all the Alien films and the Predator films, the Alien versus Predator films and everything. Just all in one night, just get them all out of the way. No, no, not happening. Uh, right, so, anyway, uh, we'll read, I'll read out the, um, the, uh, the, the synopsis. Everybody knows what, what this film's about. If you haven't seen Alien, where have you been for the last 30-odd years? But I'll read it out. I did set up, I did do a, a little video with me reading out the, the synopsis for it, but I didn't like. I don't like it. How this, how I, I always end it on a stupid voice, but I don't. <laughs> so I'll just read this out. In the distant future, the crew of the commercial spaceship Nostromo is on its way home when the crew picks up a distress call from a distant moon. The crew is under obligation to investigate, and the spaceship descends on the small planetoid afterward. After a rough landing, three crew members leave the spaceship to explore the area on the planetoid. Uh, at the same time as the crew discovers a hive colony of some unknown creature, the ship's computer deciphers the message to be a warning, not a distress call. When one of the eggs is disturbed, what eggs? I don't know. The crew realises that it, uh, it is not alone on the spaceship. What do you mean that it is not alone? That they are not alone on the spaceship. And... Uh, and the crew must deal with the consequences. That wasn't a very well-written story in its synopsis, was it? Never mind. That was from IMDb. And Windgrace is here. He's in mourning again. Rest in peace, Lower Decks. We've just learned Star Trek Lower Decks is going to start its final season. 
Uh, I'm going to do some Star Trek news tomorrow because there was some other news as well about a Star Trek film. So I'm going to do a Star Trek news uh, video tomorrow. So anyway, anyway. Who wrote that synopsis? I don't know. Somebody on the uh, Blaze Snakes 9, <laughs> it says, uh, on IMDb. On IMDb. Right. Uh... Is that it? Uh, what else can we talk about it for? Uh, it had a budget of $11 million, which I think at the time were about £8.5 million, pounds, I think. Could be wrong. Um, and it grossed $184 uh, million, so it did really well. It was a box office smash, wasn't it? Right, so, with that out of the way, uh, don't forget, like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, Um Hit the notification bell if you're subscribed already. Um, hit the um, what's what's what, what's a super chat or super thanks or whatever if they're there. Hopefully, I won't get a copyright strike. I'm going to be super careful. I'm not going to play any clips from the from the video um, that we're going to be watching. Uh, I'm just going to go through it in a series of stills, uh, which I always say I know, but I usually end up playing little video clips, and then I get copyright strikes left, right, and centre. Not strikes, claims. Uh, but more often than not, that um, demonetizes them. Uh, not that I get any super thanks or anything like that, but that's by the by, that's uh, uh, something else. Right, uh, also, if you notice, if you go into my channel, uh, you notice there's a store now. There's uh, I've set up a spread, a spread shirt, spread shop, whatever the hell they're called. So you can get T-shirts and mugs and stuff with this, this logo and other logos um, splattered on them. Um... So I don't know what quality they are. I don't know. I haven't bought any myself yet, so they might be crap. Anyway, but it's there. <laughs> um, good stuff gets cancelled, crap gets kept. Uh, sometimes, yes, sometimes. Anyway, right. So, off we go. Let's start the film, shall we? Um, I came up with my logo idea, but I need a real artist to draw it up. Well, I, I don't know any. <laughs> Oh dear. Right, anyway, so uh, I'll make myself titchy tiny. Hang on, I've got to uh, get rid of the uh, that stuff down there because of the subtitles. And I'll make myself titchy tiny. Which one is it? Can't remember. Try that one. Nope, try that one. There we go. <laughs> uh, and we'll get the film up. Oh, I don't full screen the bugger first. Whoops, I forgot to mute it. Forgot to mute it. Right, here we go. Good old 20th century Fox logo. The old one, not the new one from 1997 when they did the new one. They were kind of CG. Uh, this is the good old-fashioned one. Um, we going? Oh, you bloody thing. It's going to be one of those nights. It's going to be one of those nights. Right, we're off. We're off, fingers crossed. What's, what's he done that for? What did he start again for? I have no idea. Right, we begin with uh, space and some sort of ring system. There we go, Brandywine, Ronald Shusset production. The producers were Gordon Carroll, uh, Walter Hill and David Geiler. Uh, they're Brandywine. Uh, apparently were a new studio, well, new production company, whatever they'd set up. Walter Hill's been around for forever, hasn't he? Uh, in producing and directing. Uh, famously, um, um, The Warriors. They did The Warriors, didn't they? Uh, a film which everybody raves about, but, you know, I'm not a big fan of, to be honest. But anyway. Right, so, here we go. This is the planet in question, and the Ridley Scott film, and we're going to see the titles uh, pop up like that. Uh, as we see the cast... Uh, oddly enough, I was surprised actually watching the um, the documentary about this. You'd think it'd have a, a super long written by section uh, because the original screenplay was by Dan O'Bannon uh, um, from a story by mostly Dan O'Bannon. Uh, why am I saying it like that? Dan O'Bannon, <laughs> Dan O'Bannon, and Ronald Shusset. Um But from listening to it, you think. It'd have a longer, you know, written by um, um, credit 
uh, because Walter Hill and David Geiler and all them came in and rewrote the script, essentially. Uh, but they gave sole screen credit for the screenplay to Dan O'Bannon. So I don't know what he's moaning about, God rest his soul. But he was a moaner with Dan O'Bannon. Um, but anyway. Uh, so off we go. Right, so. Right, we begin. The commercial toying vehicle, Nostromo. We're going to get some an info dump uh, in the form of words uh, when it comes on. There we go. Commercial toying vehicle, the Nostromo, Crew 7, cargo refinery processing, 20 million tonnes of mineral ore. Don't know where they got it from, but uh, it doesn't say, does it? Course returning to Earth. Maybe it's from the Solomons, if that's somewhere in space, because that's we hear that later on. Uh, but there we go. Uh, that's the refinery. Um, and the uh, the Nostromo is this little bit at the front here that you can't really make out, but it's there. Uh, but it's towing this huge refinery, uh, which I think has it must have three reactors. Or does the Nostromo have three reactors? I don't know what blew up at the end. Spoilers, it all blows up at the end. Uh, I presume it's just the Nostromo, but it took the refinery with it. Um, crew seven of nine, yes, please. <laughs> Could say it's a crew of eight, couldn't you? Because there's Jonesy as well. Don't forget the cat. Uh, space, the final frontier. These are the voids of the cargo ship Nostromo on its final fateful voyage. Indeed. Anyway, uh, by the way, this is set in the year 2122. Just thought I'd throw that one out there. Here we get a nice shot of the um, the ship, uh, a little flyby of the ship. It's not the visual effects. They said visual effects in this film, but. To be honest, there's not that many visual effects in this film. Uh, a lot of them are in camera, because uh, you don't see a lot of space and stars and stuff like that. You see a lot of close-ups of the ship flying by and stuff, or with s smoke going by it. Uh, and not a lot with the stars. And I, I guess when you do see the stars, more often than not, they're actually there, you know, on a, a, a pinprick background sort of thing, with light shining through. Uh, to get this, I presume that, but... Um, so they're actually, you know, good old, good old model shots. And uh, the Nostromo model was, I think, about 17 feet long by the time they'd finished. Uh, they built the model, did the model makers, then Ridley Scott kept coming in and saying, add these bits. It ended up being about 17 feet long, the biggest one. And that it was on a, um, what they call them, a forklift truck they used. Uh, it had holes in it for forklift truck forks. Uh, and they used that to, to move it about. So there we go. Uh, and Josh Temple's arrived, yeah. Uh, we need your harpoon. Uh, well, at the end. <laughs> anyway. Uh, right, so. Uh, it's three-hour tour. I don't know. But anyway, right, so off we go. We're going to, going to see, we're going to see the ship. This is the Nostromo. Uh, say, good old... Uh, Fashioned uh, design, uh, I suppose at the time it was kind of new because we were used to seeing spaceships being all shiny and lovely, weren't we? But uh, Ridley Scott wanted it to be dirty. Um, apart from this bit, <laughs> it's, it's like um, there's parts of the ship that are all dirty and grimy, and then there's other parts that are all clean and pristine, uh, like this bit. Um, with its, uh, these are photocopier lids apparently. Uh, they must have got a, a lot of them because we see a lot of photocopier lids. This is the kitchen, isn't it? I think because there's food and stuff up there. Looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, with blenders and coffee makers. Yes, there's a coffee maker there. So they were seeing the the kitchen. Um, why don't they add so much unnecessary greebles onto the models anymore? Um, because they're all done in CG these days, aren't they? Um, I suppose it's easier to glue bits onto a model than it is to render, you know, knobbly bits <laughs> on a computer. Anyway, so we're going through the ship. Here we go. And we're, we're seeing, um, uh, like I said, there's the air conditioning or whatever it's got. It's blowing papers about and things are moving. Um, it's to give the uh, like the impression that you know it's an empty ship. It's like a ghost ship, in a way, because uh, there's nobody about. Uh, and then we get the famous scene where we see the two helmets um, that we never see them wear. We never see them wear these helmets. What they're there for? I've no idea. Maybe it's in case there's a you know 
an accident or whatever, I don't know. But we see these two helmets behind these, I presume, the pilot seats. And um, the screens burst into life. Practical models will always look better than CG in most cases. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. I agree. Uh, the way they made the Borg cube is amazing, in my opinion. More of that, please. Yes, yes. Uh, I said proper models. Proper models will always be better and will always look more realistic. Yes, you can do do more things with a CG model, can't you? You know, flip it about and fly it about and do all this stuff. But uh, you can't be a good old-fashioned model. Anyway, right, so the screen bursts into life, like, like so. And... Um, you're supposed to get the impression that these two helmets are talking to each other, but I never got that impression. Uh, when, I, when I've watched it loads of times, and then I've, that commentaries and stuff, I've said, you know, oh, it's, it's supposed to look like the helmets are talking to one another. I never got that. <laughs> I've just seen screens reflected in the helmets in a cool way. So anyway, so something's happening. We're seeing the things on screens going making daft noises don't know why just is uh then we're moving through another corridor and uh we're coming into the uh the uh what do you call it the cryonics bay or whatever um uh, and we see us i think this is uh, our first um sticker thing that uh, ron cobb went round the set putting his stickers on and uh hang on i've got um uh, i'll just take that off a minute where have I put them? Here we are. Right, we'll put this back up. I've got my uh, my things here, so we can see. We can go whenever we see a sticker. I'm going to go back to this, <laughs> and we can learn what it is. So we saw that, didn't we? So hazard warning. That's what that one means. Uh, so there we go. So we know what that means. I don't know why there's a hazard warning for the the, the cryogenics area or whatever we want to call it. But uh, anyway, right. So there you go. So that's what that is. Right, let's get back to the film. Bear with me. Oh, bloody F11 is there. Right, so we're heading into the uh, the thing in my bob. Uh, CG is good for shields and pew pews. Yes, it is. As I said, and good for you know um, enhancing things as well. Uh, but if you can afford the CGI from Lost in Space or the Expanse, then it's fine. Uh, but why pay tons more budget if they do a poor job with the CGI? Well, yeah. I think they overcharge a lot, these CGI companies. Um, that, that's why films cost like $200 million a, a, a pop. I think they overcharge. I think they're taking studios for a ride. But anyway, that's coming from somebody that knows nothing about CG rendering. <laughs> right, so in we go. There we go. It opens up and lights up and Jerry Goldsmith's score swells as it all uh, lights up. Uh, there we go. Ooh, comes open. Oh, I said I wasn't going to do that, didn't I? Uh, oh, another sticker, look. Another sticker. Right, we've got to check that one out. Uh, this sticker is... Which one was it? it? Well, that one, wasn't it? Cryogenic Vault. That's what that one means. Oh, right, it's a person there, isn't it? Just laid out with a huge... <laughs> upside down pyramid or an icicle that's gonna skewer him that's uh there we go cryogenic vault cool right back to the uh, task at hand right um the matt leblanc lost in space i assume you mean no netflix lost in space <laughs> i like the matt leblanc one to be honest apart from that alien but, uh, ooh. Right, so the crew's all waking up. So we got there. Yeah, so we've got Kane there, and we've got Parker there. Uh, and who the hell's that? I've no idea. I can't make out who that is. Uh, Ash there. Boo. Uh, somebody with knobbly knees there, and somebody else with knobbly knees. Uh, not quite knobbly knees. Who's, who the hell is that supposed to be? Dallas, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, let's move in. Because I'm sure this one changes. I'm sure that becomes somebody else. Because I remember seeing some really knobbly knees in another shot. Sure, there we go. <laughs> that's a different person, isn't it? They've moved them round. Because uh, that's obviously... Um, um, 
um, Veronica Cartwright, uh, Lambert, uh, is nearly showing her boobs there, isn't she? She, isn't she? She's got a bit of uh, tape covering her up there. Cheeky, never noticed that before. Uh, I presume Ripley's round the other side. Where's the cat? God knows. And um, where's Brent? Brett, not Brent, Brett. Don't know. But anyway, uh, good old Kane's the first to wake up. So he sits there for a bit. There's a lot of long, lingering shots in this film, which you won't be able to get away with these days. Um, kids these days don't have the attention span, do they? But lots of long shots. So we see him. Then he gets up, and then we see the others starting to, uh, starting to uh, stir. Should have shown the cat jumping out of one of the pods, shouldn't it, and running off. Or maybe it doesn't go in. I don't know. But um, maybe it just runs around the ship eating all the rats that's in there, maybe. I don't know. Uh, as it evolves into um, Danny John Jules. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I'm not sure, but I think in Romulus we see pods that look in between alien and aliens look-wise. Oh, maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. That would be, you know, a nice touch. Right. So, they're having breakfast or whatever. I don't know what they're eating. Looks like popcorn, that, doesn't it? And God knows, I don't know. Uh, they're all eating. They've had showers and stuff like that. And they're all talking. Oh, look, cornbread. There we go. I keep seeing cornbread. It's good for your baby. <laughs> uh, and there's the famous uh, dipping birds. Um that we see in Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so, they all think they're nearly home. They think they're nearly home. Uh, by the way, this ship must be travelling faster than the speed of light, um, even though they are in, in cryostasis, if you want to call it that. Uh, but it must be travelling faster than light, because it doesn't take them that long to get home. But Anyway. Oh, there's the cat. Just noticed it there, look. Uh, there's a little banter between uh, you know the uh, various uh, crew members and me. Well, there we have the crew. We've got Dallas. That's Tom Skerritt. He's the captain. Uh, Lambert, with a look on her face, um, uh, is communications. I think I can't actually bloody remember. <laughs> uh, does it say? I'm sure she's communications. Does it say? Uh, do, 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 do. Navigator, uh, sorry, she's the navigator. Um, uh, oh, I've seen it somewhere. I, I should, I should have got that list up, shouldn't I? I'll, I'll do it now. We're live. What the hell? Uh, Nostromo crew. Here we go. Here we go. Da, 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 da. No, don't just say that. Don't just tell us who they are. Tell us what they do. You stupid bloody thing. Uh, that's not a thing either. That's a shop page. Come on, I've seen it somewhere. I've seen it somewhere. Here we go. Here we go. Right. In a minute. Just bear with me. Right. Arthur Dallas. That's Arthur Dallas, Captain, Ship's Master. Um, uh, Joan Lambert uh, is the navigation officer. Uh, who else have we got? Right, let's see. Uh, let's move around. Here we go. Here we've got Ellen Ripley, uh, warrant officer. Um, that's just a rank, though, isn't it? That's not what she does. But anyway, whatever. Um, uh, Samuel Brett, uh, engineer's mate, engineering technician. Who else we got? There we go. Uh, we've got Kane, the executive. Thomas Kane, executive officer. Uh, Dennis Parker, chief engineer. And over there... Uh, is Ash, science officer. He doesn't have a first name for some reason. I wonder why. And of course, we've got Jones, the ship's cat. Um, that's a good screenshot of her, is it? Watch she going. <laughs> uh, would be nice to see the big chap again in Romulus. Which big chap? You mean the alien? Uh, nobody told me there was an android on board. Why not? Is there? I don't know. We don't know anything about androids. <laughs> right, so, oh, hang on. More signs. I just noticed it. Let's go back, 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 back. I saw it. There we go. Uh, see if we can get a... Oh, come on. Come on. See if we can see a, 
a good a good shot of it. Is it going to show it? Let's see if we can get another view. I saw stickers. I saw stickers. We've got to look them up. Oh, I saw it then. Still got, got a good view. Oh. Well, we'll have to see if we can come back to them because I can't make them out. Because they're too blurry. Can you make that out? See if we can uh, work it out from the uh, from the list. So I'll remove that and we'll get the uh, the thing back up. I forgot what they were. <laughs> I forgot what they were. Um, what did we see? I can't remember what we saw. I've forgotten already. I'm bloody hopeless. Don't know. One of them, probably. I'm going to have to go back out and see. There we go. What is it? So it's uh, something, that one, like a, just a, a triangle there and like a, a, a pad thing there. Right, so. so that one, isn't it? Coffee, bridge, and what was the other one? Oh, that one there. Computer terminal. That's what that sign was said, telling us. So they've got a sign for coffee. <laughs> Why have they got a sign for coffee? I suppose coffee's quite important, isn't it? Oh, dear. So that's the signs that we saw there. Coffee, bridge, and computer terminal. Cool. Right, where were we? Uh, the full screen again. Oh, why can't they put bloody function keys at the bottom? Um, bloody synth. <laughs> Good job there's no Romulans on board, isn't it? They don't like them, do they? Apparently. Suddenly. I prefer an artificial person myself. Uh, aliens had self-identifying pronouns too. Uh, I need the coffee sign. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh look, um, Dallas is giving Parker evil eyes. Look, Parker, come on, can me coffee? Thank you. Anyway, there we go. Uh, obviously, you know, Yafet Kotto, probably most famous. Apart from this, uh, it was a, a bad guy. We're a Bond villain, money and live and let die. There we go. Right. So, oh, another sticker. That's the. Um, oh, I forgot already. <laughs> hazard area or something like that, isn't it? Uh, why is it hazard area in the computer room? Don't know. But anyway, in he goes uh, into the the main computer room, and he signs in. Oh, hang on, what does he say? Important something. I don't know. Whatever. Um, right, okay. All right, so he starts typing stuff in. And he says, what's the uh, what's the story, mother, he says. Uh, there we go. You've got to go through this list of uh, command options. Um, and presumably most of them are like technical things. And I think when he gets to interface 2037, I think that's that's the for numpties. That's probably like the AI where you can just type in. You know, a question and the ship's AI will be able to interpret it. Uh, where but all the others, all the other stuff you can pick, it's probably technical things where you need to know what you're doing. <laughs> that's that's how I look at it. Anyway, but anyway, off, off it goes. Meanwhile, the rest of the crew is getting ready. They think they're arriving at Earth, so they're all taking their positions on the bridge. Um, so they're switching things on. Um, I think we might see our first Wayland Yatani. Uh, or is it just Wayland uh, in this? Or they might have just said Wayland with no D, but we'll see. Um, uh, they can't get through. There's nobody answering their hails. And the. Uh, hang on just a minute. Um, oh, I said, Where's Earth? And obviously the navigator. She says, Where's Earth? And he says, You should know because she's the navigator. Uh, she says, It's not our system. So they're trying the hailing, and um, there we go. Contract traffic control. So Ripley starts, you know, contract, con try to contact Antarctica control. Why would you have control in Antarctica? I've no idea. Um, out of the Solomons. So is that a place in space, or do they mean the Solomon Islands? You know, in the Pacific. I've no idea. But anyway, whatever. Uh, person of artifice is the proper term. P P O A. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yes, that's not our system. Oh, is the, 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 the notification come just arrived now? Unbelievable. Nice one, YouTube. Uh, by the way, better make sure we are going out. We are obviously we are going on on the uh, on YouTube. 
Uh, fingers crossed we're going on Rumble. I forgot to mention that, didn't I, earlier on? Uh, hopefully we're going on Rumble. Come on then. Yes, we are. We're going on Rumble. And we're going on Twitch as well, I hope. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Yes, we are. We're going on Twitch as well, right. Right, so she's contacting, trying to contact uh, Antarctica Control. Uh, oh, we'll get a good look at the uh, the Stromo from outside. It's very jiggity jaggedy at the, at the front end, but the back end's all smooth and rounded with engines and stuff. But the front end is all sharp angles and stuff for some reason. Um, anyway, so there it comes gliding by. Um, And then she says, uh, there we go, she's found it. She knows where they are. They're just entering the Zeta 2 reticuli system, which I think is about 40 light years away, I think. Hang on, I'll double check. I should have done this before, I'm not <laughs> I meant to, and I forgot. Zeta reticuli. Zeta reticuli. Uh, yes, 39.17 light years away. Uh, there you go. Um, so that's how far away. They're about 40 light years from Earth, and we learn it'll take them 10 months to get home. So they're obviously travelling a lot faster than the speed of light. Because uh, at the speed of light, it'd take them 40 years to get home. But anyway, you can see on this map, look, uh, that's where they've come from, wherever that is. Does it say? No, it doesn't. But that's where they are. Can you see me, me point? So, look. And that's where they're heading. Sol. It says there, Sol. Have any other names on here? Not that I can see. Just lots of numbers. I can't make out the writing on the on these stickers either, which is poo, because there might be nice little notes from the production design and stuff like that. Uh, 99.999 is for antibacterial clean. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you on about? Bad me. But anyway, oddly enough, Zeta 2 reticuli, or Zeta, Zeta reticuli, uh, is the the star system, if you believe in it, uh, that Project Serpo went to. There's a conspiracy theory or a story that um, there was a, a an exchange between aliens uh, called Ebens from the Zeta Reticuli system and humans where I think it was about 12 or something like that people uh, went went there from Earth and it took them a long time to get there and several of them died and then you know, most of them came back and, and all that stuff. And apparently that's, it's it's alleged that that's what the end of Close Encounters of the Third Kind is based on. You know, you see the people ready to do this exchange, uh, but they just take Roy Neely, don't they? Uh, but, uh, that's alleged what that's based on. But uh, anyway, if you believe that sort of thing. Right. Right. So, so the, 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 only halfway, halfway home, apparently. Right, so. What the hell we doing out here? They don't know why Why they're not nearly home. So, anyway. Uh, meanwhile, Parker and Brett are going to check their engines and stuff. And um, they're talking about, um, you know, the others don't like, you know, they're the blue-collar workers, aren't they? The Parker and Brett, you know, they're... they're the dog's bodies. That's how they see themselves, anyway. And they mustn't get paid as much as the others as well. Uh, and they're all just moaning about it. Right, but they're on the... Oh, no, they're on the way back. They're coming back from engineering or whatever, and they're coming back up to the... Uh, um, the rec room, we'll call it. So... Right, so he comes in, and apparently Ash is sitting in his seat uh, because um, apparently it seems like Parker's racist because he he, sw he he wipes the seat clean uh, when Ash gets up. But uh, or maybe Ash is very sweaty. I don't know. Maybe he's got a sweaty bum. You know, <laughs> maybe he's leaking a bit. I don't know. But right, so we're gonna they're going to learn now why they're not home you know they've learned that they're not home obviously parker and brett don't know anything about this because they've been down in the bowels of the ship and um this is where we learn that uh, the ship's computer mother uh, they said mother in this and it says mother in the uh subtitles but in the on the, on the blu-ray and on the dvd box set as well the, the, it, mother is spelled m-u-t-h-u-r as though it stands for something i've no idea but uh Anyway, 
Uh, the ship's computer, anyway, Mother has uh, woken them up because she's picked up uh, a signal of unknown origin and that by law or whatever, they've got to um, investigate um, you know signals that may be of intelligent origin. So I don't know if humans by this time had found you know intelligent life in outer space or not. I don't know. But at some point, they'll, they'll come across the Arcturians, won't they? Because, you know, uh, which you can... Uh, which you can bonk uh, <laughs> of either, you know. I don't think they have uh, they have sexes like us do Arturians, because it doesn't matter if it's Arturian, baby. Anyway, uh, but at this time I don't know. So that's why they've got to uh, investigate. And Parker's not happy about this. Uh, he says, you know, you know, why why should we bother? It's not part of my job description to do to you know investigating all this stuff. And then Ash. Reminds him that they're obligated uh, under Section 8. Go on, what's the other one? That doesn't, doesn't matter. Under Section 8, blah, 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 to investigate any uh, transmission that may be of an intelligent origin. To, but uh, then we learn that uh, if they don't, you know, they could forfeit their shares, which means they don't get paid. Uh, right, so they're going in. Uh, now this little scene. I think this is a, an added scene in the director's cut. I don't think this was in the theatrical version, uh, where they get um, um, Lambert to play back the the signal that the that they're uh, receiving, and it's uh, you know a kind of a spooky signal, making all weird noises. Uh, he calls it an acoustical beacon. I don't know how that would work going through space, because you know <laughs> acoustics means sound. Sound don't travel in space. I don't know, but anyway. Uh, I guess it, maybe it's a voice. Don't know. They don't know what it is. But anyway, so they're heading in, uh, and it's coming from. She, she can she can pinpoint the the location now, and it's a planetoid which is orbiting a, a ring planet. Uh, there you go, twelve hundred kilometers. So it's not a tiny little tiny teeny tiny like moonlet or something like that. It's about what about half the size of our moon in it, twelve hundred kilometers. So uh, you know, it's a uh, quite a big body, um, but, you know, quite small. Oddly enough, it, it's got an atmosphere and it's got decent gravity for something so small, but no, you know, never mind, <laughs> it's science fiction. Uh, hang on, where are we? Um, we uh, Savakos says, we'll be interested to see how Rook looks in Romulus, how close to Sir Ian Holm will it be? Don't know, that's the rumour, isn't it, that it's going to be Ian Holm, uh, a CG Ian Holm as Rook. But there is, you know, there is another, there seems to be another android, doesn't there, that, um, that black fella. Uh, I misread that as rock and was suddenly scared. <laughs> uh, could be the rock. Uh, some interesting moon content on the new Y files, not Luna though. Yes, I've seen it, about four boss. Uh, a, good, a good episode. Uh, although he debunks it all at the end. I hate it when he does that bit. Should just turn that bit off and he starts debunking things at the end. <laughs> we don't want to hear that, AJ. Uh, mass, not size, determines gravity. Yes, it must have a very heavy core or something like that. But generally, size, you know, in, in, in planetary terms, you know, a, 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 the size of a, a body is, is generally means it's got, you know, determines, you know, its mass, doesn't it? Generally, um, Unless it is, you know, unusual and it does have a, a huge, heavy core or something like that. But anyway. Right. There we go. says, what about gravity? And he says something like 0.8 or something. Yeah, 0.86. So it's nearly Earth normal. Not far off. But a bit of a spring in your step. Uh, I have a heavy core. Yes, yeah, so do I. <laughs> Right, so they're heading in, there we go, there we see, oh, there we see, there's the old uh, the ring planet, and it's one of these moons, uh, and you can see there's the uh, refinery, hoving into view, uh, I think this is their Star Wars you know, opening shot, isn't it? <laughs> uh, right, so, here we go, some nice computer screens now, uh, I'm waiting to see, there's somewhere that says, you know, whale and your time, I'm sure it says it somewhere, anyway, never mind. So they're going in. Uh, right, oh, another cool shot. There we go. One of the few shots that we actually see space and stuff. 
apparently on the the model, it was you know quite a big model of the refinery that it took them you know a long time to build and. Um, um, Ridley Scott had just come in and start breaking bits off it, hitting it with mallets and stuff to, to break things off and says, you know, move this here, move that there, and after lunch we're going to film it. And they're like, we just spent six weeks building this and you're just smashing it up. But they managed. Right, so in they go. Yeah, they've got a nice cool shot there of the uh, teeny tiny ship going in. Is this the planet or is this the one there that they're going into? I don't know. Orbiting. Right, so, oh, this is where they disengage the platform um, that's that's holding on the um, the Nostromo. Here it comes; it's it's coming out. And apparently, this uh, that we'll see again. We'll see in a minute that uh, we'll see a shot from above. Oh, that's the famous um, umbilical computer graphic uh, that they use again. He uses again, doesn't he? Ridley Scott he uses that in um, in Blade Runner. Um, I think I've gone too far. There we go. Uh, hang on, back, 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 back. There we go. See it from above. Uh, it comes out. This is made from Hornby uh, train set tracks. <laughs> they went out and bought loads of Hornby train sets and used this, use these on the, uh, you know, the, the the track path to build this umbilical thing that comes out. And apparently that's R two D one of R two D 2s feet or a similar. They use that design of R two D 2s feet for this. Uh, and to do this, to, they just—it's just fastened to a, um, um, a what you call it, a, a forklift truck, and they basically just drove the forklift truck backwards and just pulled it out of the, uh, um, you know, that that model part there, the refinery. So there we go. That's how they did that. Anyway, uh, Wing Grace, we missed you for Firefox. Someone had about thirty-seven questions. Yes. Yes, we need the things answering about planes and weapons and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, you think it would have Wayland on the hull of the Nostromo somewhere too? Yes, yes. We see the the logo that looks like that kind of Egyptian logo. We see that up and down. Um, looks more like an ATAT foot. It does, doesn't it? But they said in the documents that it were R two D 2s foot. Maybe they got it wrong. Maybe the Meant an attack. But no, attacks weren't out yet, were they? This was 1979, a year before Empire. So, me, but oddly enough, uh, Brian Johnson, uh, no relation, um, worked on the effects for this, uh, actually left this film to go and work on Empire Strikes Back. Um, so there we go. And somebody else uh, took over. But they did say R2-D2 foot. I don't know if it is actually an R two D two foot, or if they just use that shape for the uh, thing. Anyway, right. So the disengage and the ship undocks. Here it goes. In a minute. There it goes. Undocks from the uh, refinery, uh, all with dramatic music from Jerry Goldsmith going on. And uh, here we go. Here we go. Nice bit of engine lights, and off it goes. Heading towards the planet. There we go. It just goes up. Because it's realistic space. Don't have to keep going all the time. Uh, you can't just slap an Air Force sticker on the side of it. <laughs> Stargate reference. SG-1, isn't it, I think. The, um... Oh, I've got the bloody call it now. The thingamabob. Death glider or something like that, wasn't it? You can't call it the Enterprise either. Phasers, sorry, sir. Good old Jack. Anyway, right, so they're entering orbit now, so that's a nice uh, shots of it gliding down. Right, it's, it's on one of these screens somewhere, I've seen it. Unless they've, unless they've taken it off, but uh, so nice little computer graphics. I'm guessing these, I don't know, 1979, would these be actual computer graphics or would this like be hand animated? I don't know. Do you think it's hand animated or is it actual computer graphics? You know, like, um, what they call it, um, vector graphics, I don't know. But anyway, so they're going down. Now then, that's, I'm looking for this, I've seen it somewhere. <laughs> but whatever it's happened, it's cancelled, it says there, whatever that means, no idea. But, 
Uh, they're entering the upper atmosphere now, and then they hear roars and stuff like that, whatever that means, I don't know, but uh, it's coming down. Uh, there we go. <coughs> there we go. Whalen Yatani Nostromo, 160240. So they've missed the D off. <laughs> they've missed the D off. But they've got some turbulence, so they're in for a bit of chop. And they're in the pipe, five by five. Is that uh, Jones as a young, as a young'un, as a kitten? Don't know. Anyway, right, so they're going down. Right. So, here we go. They're dropping down. This is some more lice. Don't know if it's computer graphic. I mean, for all I know, that could be, you know, we see that, and it's it's that's like a 3D rendering of, of where the landing looked like that. For all we know, it could be, it's either computer graphics, like vector-style graphics, or it could just be a... a a model for all we know we just like glowing tape on it for all, i don't know but anyway right so it's coming into land and this really annoys me for some reason these uh, these lights on the oh for god's sake these lights on the underside let's show it again there we go why are they all higgledy piggledy can't they put them in a straight line i think it's supposed to show how big the ship is so that they couldn't get it in a straight line because the ship's so huge and it's all, you know, ins and outs and stuff like that, so they couldn't get it in a straight line. I don't know. Um, that epic Jerry Goldsmith. Yes, he is. I love all the hand graphics in the OG Hitchhiker. Hitchhiker's Guide, you mean. Um, the, the BBC version. Yes, because they're all hand animated, aren't they? The, you know, what you're supposed to be seen on the, in the book. Uh, manufactured at the same yard as the Firefly Serenity. Bits randomly fly off, yes, apparently. Anyway, in it comes to land, and it's obviously a really badly designed ship because it just they're coming to land, and see they're going down, going down, and uh, just a random rock. Cause remember, this ship is massive. <laughs> uh, they're parking it as well. They're landing in this little area here. You'd think they'd find a big open space, wouldn't you? But they're just they're all rocks all over. Uh, and it's going down. And then, oh, see, I've gone past it now. And then, um, there we go. Just like this little rock there, little rock there, just knackers the whole ship up for some reason. <laughs> Things start blowing up in the in in the the on the bridge. Don't they have shock absorbers? Obviously not. Obviously not. Uh, the logo is in the pilot of Firefly, so most likely. Yes, what was that? Uh, hang on. Uh, something just pinged on my phone. Make sure it's not an important message. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, right. <laughs> Stop sending me messages, Marie, when I'm in the middle of a show. She never watches me shows. Anyway. <laughs> Right, so everything's blowing up and stuff like that for some weird reason. So they get the fire extinguisher out and stuff and all that jazz. There's a storm raging outside because it was a dark and stormy night. You know, it's a ghost story, essentially. It's a, a haunted house story, isn't it? So anyway, so they're, getting, they're picking up the pieces. We're picking up the pieces down here, exec. And all that stuff. And uh, they're on the radio to Bretton Parker. Uh, they're saying all oh, the damage. It's going to take them 25 hours to reroute all these ducts. And they need dry dock and all that. Um, but um, So they need like a whole day to fix everything. Uh, right. So they're stuck there for a day. Um so they've got to work out where this signal's coming from now, and it's only it's only two kilometres away, and the sun's coming up in 20 minutes. Pardon me. So they get an analysis of the atmosphere, it says it's almost primordial, and it's got methane and nitrogen and all this other stuff in. Uh, oh, and this one as well, it says here. Hang on, there we go. Uh, rock lava base, and then it says deep cold below, well below the line. That's what it says in the subtitles. Deep. I don't. I always thought it was deep coal. You know, I always thought it meant deep coal, well below the line, as in you know a layer of coal. That's what I always thought it said. But it says they're deep cold. Whatever. 
so um, Dallas, uh, Kane and Lambert, they're going. Uh, they're the, we, the away team uh, on this mission. Uh, so the brown coats lost the war because the Alliance sent in the Xenomorphs. Possible, and they may have used Xeno DNA in the Reaver experiments. Don't forget, uh, Joss Whedon did write Alien Resurrection. There's another <laughs> reference there. Uh, cool. Coal implies carbon life. Yes, yes. Not necessarily, but uh, it can do, yes. It can do. Right. Uh, now, they're all getting ready, and this is Ash putting his uh, his work gear on and doing his little little exercise he does. There he is. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, another sticker. That's a hazard sticker, isn't it? Oh, that's the only one we've got. Right. Because this is the airlock. You think there'd be another sticker on saying that this is an airlock, but they didn't. Uh, it's the outer door, isn't it? So there we go. Off they go. Uh, apparently, these suits were a nightmare to wear. Uh, they couldn't breathe in them for a the start. Uh, they kept passing out. And uh, and this next shot that we shall see in a minute, uh, when it shows them going down the elevator, uh, when it's ready. Here we go. This shot, this is uh, Ridley Scott's kids, and apparently they passed out as well. <laughs> and then after that, they put oxygen in the suits. So, because the kids passed out, they thought, well, maybe we should do something about it. So they did. Um, and the huge depredator saw humans like space balls. Yes, they probably did. Humans, hillbillies of the galaxy. <laughs> Uh, anyway, these are Ridley Scott's kids um, in in these little suits uh, to make the the leg and stuff look bigger. There we go. That's a uh, for scale. That's one of the landing struts, and that's another one over there, uh, which we we'll see again later on retracted in the ship. Uh, but uh, there we go. So, uh, so I think one of the kids uh, in in one of them suits must must be Luke Scott, one of Rid Ridley Scott's kids. Luke Scott goes on has gone on to become a director in his own right. He directed the film we watched the other week, Morgan. So there we go. Right, so they're heading out. They've got a two kilometer walk, which is only about a just over a mile in it, something like that. So it's not that far. Out from here to from here to the supermarket. Not that you know what that means, but <laughs> not you've any reference, but I know. <laughs> um, oh, this is um, Parker and Brett talking to I think Ripley. Is she there? Um, yeah, they said they're not going to do any more work till they get the the bonus situation straightened out. And Ripley tells them, "You're legal. You know, you you legally gonna get whatever's you know, you're legally gonna get a share or whatever, and um, you're gonna get whatever's coming to you." And then she swears at him and all stuff like that. So. Anyway, so they're going to get the money no matter what. I think Ash will probably just stringing them along to get them to agree to come on the mission. Uh, so everyone passed. Yes, everyone passed out. <laughs> um, Ripley's going to have a go at looking at this message now, this signal. Um, so there she is, because it's, uh, it's from the Binars. <laughs> I'm sure if somebody somebody's not binary, what does this say? I have no idea. Um, so she's having a look at that. So she must know binary. And she works out that it's a, it's a warning and not a, a distress call. Anyway, there's the sun coming up. Um, on LV426, although we don't know that it's called that yet, until the next film. Uh, in the book, it's called Acheron, isn't it? Or is it Acheron? Whatever. Uh, how does everyone feel about Megan 2 then? Uh, is that coming? Oh, no, I haven't heard anything about that. I haven't heard anything about that. Megan was my favourite film of last year. I loved Megan, I thought it was a great film. Right, so anyway, they're heading uh, um, towards the signal. And this is where we see the uh, the ship for the first time. And then it cuts to, there we go, it cuts to like video, like found footage. It cuts to found footage thingy. Um, we see the uh, the what they call it now. I forgot the call it. The derelict or whatever it's called. 
Uh, an ancient alien spaceship, uh, probably. <laughs> uh, but if if Prometheus and Alien Covenant, you know, are canon, then it could have been there a week for all we know. But anyway, so they're heading uh, towards the um, the derelict and get some more more views of it. Uh, a bit of a Prince of Darkness vibe, although this came first. But uh, anyway. But then we do get another another view. There we go. We do get a nice view of it in the end with the little lights of the little people heading to not little people, but you know the little people heading towards it. Not like Warwick Davis, not that sort of little people. Um M2 Gun. <laughs> they probably will do that, well, they probably will do that. Uh, I bet people saw the Megan, you know, with the three in it. I thought, well, what happened to the first two films? Anyway. Uh, right, so here they, they arrive at the ship. By the way, all the designs, by the way. Why did I mention it? My HR Giga, everybody knows that. Um, so he, he did all the designs for the alien and the chest burster and the um, face hugger uh, and the ship. So that's why it's got... Um, Cheeky, cheeky, uh, you know, lipped <laughs> uh, orifices. It's got orifices. That's how I'll, I'll just say that. It's got orifices. So they head inside, and then it, I think it loses um, loses contact. Uh, there's uh, ash. So it's, you know, not getting any signals anymore. They can't get through to them. So obviously something's blocking their signals now. So they enter inside the ship. That's uh, looks like some kind of secreted resin, maybe. Uh, the three is there for a reason, if I remember. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. because it's um, um, you know she says what it stands for. It stands for you know, I don't know, uh, Mark Three, something Android or something like that. In it, uh, whatever. That's it. Model Three generative Android. Yes, that's what it stands for. But. People watching it, people are just seeing that in the title, don't know that, do they? They're probably thinking, is there another two films for this? Because they've seen, like, Pan 4 stick and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, that's by the by. Jack would like to take one last jaunt through one. Yes, through the old orifice. But anyway, they're inside now. Uh in this ship that looks like it's made of, you know, some sort of organic uh, design. Uh, and they get up into what apparently is the bridge. Here we go, they climb up here. I think this is um, Ridley Scott's kids again. Uh, up into the, uh, where we see the space jockey. Here it is. Uh, a lot bigger than, um, you know, what we saw in Prometheus. Ridley Scott. What is it about you know these producer directors like George Lucas and that? They just like lose their minds and they forget what they've made in the past and just do things. Anyway, so it's sitting here. This is, I think he said you know this is probably the pilot's chair. It looks like a big bloody gun to me, but anyway, um, it's uh, sitting in there, growing out of the chair, apparently, and it's been there a long time. That's what he says. Look. Oh, looks like I've been dead a long time because it's fossilized. I said, you that means you know, usually when something's been fossilized, it's been there at least hundreds of years, usually thousands, isn't it? It takes to, to fossilize. You can't fossilize though, can it? Because for fossilization, don't you need like to be buried in clay or something like that? And and fossilization is when the minerals in the bones and stuff, the organic material is replaced with rock and that, isn't it? Uh, but anyway, whatever. Uh, but it's been there a long time, so not not uh, you know, not just a, a year or two. Um, it's a navigation telescope. I like to think. Yes, it could be. Oh, it's a big honking space gun to the Jack O'Neill again. That's very Harlan Ellison, I guess. <laughs> anyway, we see that. Uh, Something's happened to this alien. It's got a big hole in its chest. There we go. That something exploded from the inside. What could that be? Don't know. So they think, oh, that's interesting. And then as they get down, hang on. 
He gets down. Oh, it might be in a minute. Might be in a minute. I see another hole, but it looks all melted look. So what's happened here? So this doesn't look deliberate. So that's this make you think that what they're gonna find now wasn't put there by you know the crew of the ship because this looks all melted and stuff. So anyway. Um oh see this where the uh he climbs back down here, climbs down, and then for some reason Ridley uh zooms in on the 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 alien face and we're all thinking is it going to do something it's going to blink or move its mouth or something but it doesn't they just it probably just liked the the contrast in it i don't know but uh, this is where she works out that it's um it's a warning and not a uh, distress call and uh, she wants to go out and he says what's the point you know if it if it were a warning they'd know that by now so i suppose you know but anyway so um, oh, it's going down. They've, they've rigged up uh, a line, and Kane's going down through the through the hole in the floor. This is where he en it ends up in a Pink Floyd concert, <laughs> or is it the Who? Can't remember. Might be the Who. Uh, the Who concert. There he is climbing down. This was in all the trailers, wasn't it? Um, and there's just this one area. Look with this this blue mist over it. Not the others, but we can see that there are loads of. He's going to find eggs, we know that, don't we? We can see there's loads of eggs there, but are all these dead then? And just the ones under the blue mist are still alive? Like some force field or something that's protecting them? No idea. Uh, damn, I'll have to watch the new uh, AFK Star Wars video. After. Oh, is that uh, thing? Yeah. Uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it gets down, and then it goes into this this area with this laser that they rented from. I'm sure it was the Who. Uh, why do they think Pink Floyd? I don't know, but rented it from the Who. They've got, got leathery objects like eggs of some kind in, um, and he says that the light reacts when you touch it. So is it some sort of force field that's protecting them? I don't know. And were all the other eggs dead? I don't know. But anyway. So he slips, and he, but he's all right. And then he's looking at one of the eggs. And is is it because, is it just a proximity thing? Does it just sense that he's there? Or is it because he's broken, you know, is the, the blue mist layer? I don't know. Has it woke it, has that woke it up? I don't know. But uh, it looks, and we see that um, the liquid is dripping up for some reason. Uh, I'm going to show it. Well, it is anyway. It's dripping up, and... I think they just did that just to make it look creepy and weird. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense. There we go, stripping up. Uh, and it, but inside, it's like kind of a bit transparent. There, look, as he shines his light, we see it's transparent. Uh, I think they just made it a fiberglass. I think um, that transparent fiberglass. And inside, we're seeing something moving, uh, which is just Ridley Scott's hands in um, washing up gloves doing that. <laughs> uh, dear. Um, anyway, it opens up as he's looking. It opens up. Um, there you go. It opens up, and he obviously because because he's an idiot. <laughs> he has a look inside. There we see all this. Uh, I've got the call it Nottingham lace. I think it's called. It's like uh, cow's like stomach lining and stuff like that. that they put in uh, over those meat and stuff uh, to give it that organic look, and it does look kind of cool. And as he's looking, we all know what happens next. There we go. Pooing, a thing jumps out and grabs onto his helmet. Uh, obviously, it melts through his helmet. I don't know what that'll do to his face, but nothing apparently. But uh, there we go. The face hugger appears and gets him. So now they've got to drag him back now, aren't they, to the ship? So uh, there they are. They've got back um, uh, with Kane. And Dallas wants them to come back in, and they've said something's attached itself to Kane's face, and um, they want they want to come in, but uh, Ripley won't let them on board because of um, 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 because of um, you know regulations. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, not re let them on board because of regulations. Because you know if they've been if he's been infected with something, uh, it could spread to the rest of the ship. And uh, so she won't let them in. Uh, they've got to quarantine them. 
Um, but um, Ash lets them in anyway. Oh, there we go. There you go. Ash lets them in anyway. Uh, I was looking for stickers. Uh, just some arrows, isn't there? Oh, there's another stick. Some more stickers over here, look. Right, so we've got a black one, a triangle thing, and a white one. Right, let's see what they are. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, airlock is the triangle one. The black one is a uh, non-pressurised area beyond. And the white one is pressurised area. So there's all them three in that one area. Cool. Right. <laughs> Uh, okay, and what can you see? Marigolds, yes. <laughs> uh, they're they're washing up gloves. If you don't know, I don't know if that's just a British thing. Them yellow washing up gloves. Oh, the light up there as well, are they? Oh, the light up as well there. Look, because it's opening the airlock. Um, so there we go. Oh, stop it! There we go. Um, so he lets them in. Uh, right, so they're cutting off the uh, his helmet. So you know what I mean, <laughs> spacesuit helmet. Um, I like this bit for some reason. I think it's kind of cool because you can see it's like it's, it's backbone poking through the helmet. So it's melted all this to get in. Don't know. It's did it just like is it melt? Just squeeze through and then clamped onto his face inside. I don't know. I don't know. But it's done something, hasn't it? Why hasn't it damaged his face either? I don't know. But. Anyway, so they take it off. There we go. And we see it's uh, attached to his face. This was, um, as I said, designed by H.R. Giger, but uh, constructed by um, uh, Roger Dickon. Uh, he did the face hugger and the chest burster. Um, and uh, being you know, based on H.R. Giger's designs, uh, we'd, we've seen his, his stuff, his work in uh, Warlords of Atlantis, which I covered on Magnificent Mondays a few weeks ago. Good old Roger Dickon. Um, so, right, so, got to find a way to get it off. They're all looking, and Parker's, uh, he has the best idea. He says, why don't they just freeze him? But anyway, uh, oh, hang on. So the, the, I think this was cut out of the theatrical scene, where, theatrical cut, where uh, Lambert gives um, uh, Ripley... A good old slap. There she goes. And uh, I don't think she wasn't expecting it was a Gurney Weaver. I think this was a, not an ad lib, but I think Ridley Scott had said, go give go give Sigourney a good slap. So she did. And um, so anyway, to break him apart. She's slapping her because obviously Ripley wasn't going to let them in. You know, following regulations and doing what she's supposed to do. Never mind. So they're going to try and work out how to get this uh, this thing off him. Uh, so he tries to um, move one of its fingers, but uh, it just tightens its grip. It says that it's tearing his scalp and all that, and it tightens its grip, and it also tightens the the it's um, it's that does that tightens its tail around his throat, so they can't get it uh, off that way. Uh, this is where it, uh, I think Parker says, "Well, you just freeze him." Which is the sensible thing to do. Uh, there you go. How, how come you guys don't freeze him? But uh, no, they're not doing... Oh, more stickers, look. I just noticed in the back. Uh, what's that one? Uh, we've got the, the pressurised area one, and then we've got that one and that one. Right, here we go. <laughs> it's sticker time. Right, it's that one, isn't it? High radioactivity. I think it's that one, isn't it? Yes, it is that one. High radioactivity back there. Uh, and what the other one? I forgot what it was now. Uh, but but um, it's that one, a red circle. What's that one in it? Pressurized with artificial gravity. So that's what those stickers mean. Cool, huh? <laughs> uh, I love Rod Cobb stickers. Right, so off we go. Um, so ah, this put put him in the the scanner, and the, so they can have a look at what it's doing, and this is where we learn that it's uh, it's feeding him oxygen and all that stuff. There you go. It's got something down his throat. Uh, Ash says, "I would suggest it's feeding him oxygen. It's also doing other things." Does Ash know? I've no idea. I think it does. I think he does. But um, obviously, Whale and Yatani know all about the aliens, don't they? They've known about them since the twenty first century. Apparently, but anyway. Um, 
to um, Dallas makes the decision to uh, you know having to try and remove it. He says, you know, I'll, I'll take responsibility as the captain and all that jazz. So he's going to try and cut it off. There you go. He's going to make an incision just below the knuckle. So here he goes. Look at now. So he does it with his super clunky laser, whatever the hell this is. <laughs> Doesn't look it's designed for uh, precision work, does it? But uh, anyway. Uh, they have those phone apps that auto-translate language into English on your phone. I wonder if they have one for these. <laughs> um, where were we? Um, so it does a, it does his, he cuts it, and then there's a, a squirt of um, whatever and smoke. Uh, luckily, it squirts away from uh, Kane's head, and it hits the floor. I'm guessing that's just like polystyrene or something like that. They just spilt some corrosive on. I don't know. Probably. Um, so it starts eating through the floor. Luckily, it doesn't eat through John Hurt's head as well. So That crab's going to eat through the hole. So they've got to try and... I don't know what they're going to do. They put a bucket under it or something, I don't know. Uh, but anyway. Uh, oh, more, more stickers, look. <laughs> I've got more stickers. Sorry. I, I, I do, I've got to see these stickers. I'm sorry. Um, where have they gone? I can't see them anymore. Hang on. Back again. Where are them stickers going? There they are. Uh, right, what we got? We got um, uh, which one was it? I think we got that one. Pressure suit locker. We spelt pressure wrong. Pressure suit locker. What else was there? That that one isn't there. Is that, is that green or black? Did it? Did it? Did it? Um, it's not that. It's not the coffee one, is it? <laughs> Surely not. Surely not. Um, you know what? I can't see the others. Them other two. There's that one. That's a pressure suit locker. There's that one. It looks like the coffee one, but reversed, doesn't it? And there's one like a grey with a, a black inside. Or is it green? Grey. Well, there ain't none of the grey, is there? Hmm. Oh, it's that one there, isn't it? It's that one, I think. Organic storage food stuffs oh so it might be the coffee sign then <laughs> if it's organic storage food stuffs how bizarre right. so obviously the kitchen or whatever's through there i'm guessing right so anyway the following the trail of the uh, acid blood by the way i remember at the time well not at the time but a couple of years later but in science at school chemistry at school um, we were talking about alien for some reason i don't know can't remember why but our teacher said it were quite realistic, the alien in this. Because um, apparently it's a silicon-based life form, apparently. Um, K, um, Ash does mention that it, it replaces its cells with polarised silicon. So our science teacher at school came to the conclusion it was a silicon-based life form. And he said the silicon acids are really strong, apparently. I don't know. Or, or you know, really corrosive. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he said. And he was a doctor, so uh, a chemistry doctor, <laughs> not a not a GP. But anyway, so there we go. So anyway, they're following this trail of blood that's eating through the whole acid, and it's uh, they're going down several decks. I don't know how many decks there's in the Nostromo. More labels. Uh, I know that one. That's Ladderway. That's I think it says Ladderway for that one. What else we got? Uh, that's a space suit one. Uh, what we got? I can't really make them out. So I'm going to stop the. I'm stopping it every time we get to them. Um, where is it? I've seen it somewhere. Where's the ladder? Oh, there we go. Ladder way. Uh, what were the others? Can't make that one. That's a space suit one. There's one. Is that a first aid or something? Uh, no, auto dock. So yes, the first aid thing, isn't it? Um, What's the last one? Oh, it's just that's just that one, isn't it? It's just a, a ladder thing. So there's a ladder somewhere here. I don't know where, but apparently there is. <sighs> Knuckle. Not everyone has their reproductive organs between their legs. Did he cut its jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> right, so... The, oh, I can see more now, can't we? Yeah, that one's just... Um, 
Where is it? It's that one, isn't it? Is it? Or is it that one? Refrigeration. I spelled refrigeration wrong. Or is it that one? Storage. No, it's the refrigeration one, isn't it? It's that one. I do believe. So, there you go. Refrigeration. Right, back to the film. Um, there you go. Still eating through. Look, there it is. And then don't get under it. And But uh, it stops. It finally slows down and stops and uses Brett's pen to, for some reason, see. Uh, oh, it's the storage locker. Look, there. Um, so, there we go. So, they're all safe. Um Oh, this is a clue. You don't dare kill it. Because when they set off, by the way, when they set off to go to the ship, uh, Kane, Dallas and Lambert, he said, uh, Dallas said, break out the weapons. But we never see him use any weapons in this, apart from a flamethrower and a harpoon. Uh, we don't see any guns or anything. I presume he meant guns. Um, but obviously, you dare use, now they know that they dare use like a projectile weapon on it because... Um, uh, they end up spraying acid all over the ship, so they don't use those. If anybody were wondering why they don't use any weapons, uh, on the spaceship, it's not a good idea to have acid eating through your hull, is it? Right, so, uh, Parker and Brett uh, hard at work repairing the ship now. Um, and he wants to get out of there because it's uh, this planet gives him the creeps. Um and there we go. Uh, there we see um, uh, Kane in the sick bay, whatever you want to call it, with a thing on him. There, more labels, what we've got here. The Ladderway, uh, Hazardous Area. I don't know how that's there. And, and that one, a new one. What's this one? <laughs> uh, it's that one, isn't it? A bulkhead door. That's what that label means. Uh, that one, it's a bulkhead door. So there we go. Oh, there's another one over there, look. Another one over there. What does that one mean? Um, that one, Photonic Systems, Fibre Optics, that's what's over yonder. That one, Photonic Systems, Fibre Optics over there. So, there we go. Is that where they, they put him into the scanner thing, maybe? I don't know. But anyway. So, he's there, um, being uh, being ill. Uh, oh, we're having a little, uh, well, we're having a little trip through uh, the medical bay now, and there's the Photonic... Um, fiber optics label. And here we see Ash uh, checking his uh, or doing his uh, investigations. And oh, there's the the logo with the. Um, uh, so it looks like um, is it a medical logo? In it? it's the medical thing logo, isn't it? It's supposed to look like the Egyptian sun god or something. In it, I don't know. Uh, oh, you see it again there. Uh, my mother gave me that pen for Christmas, all covered in acid. <laughs> so you opened it, but ah! she went, ah! Anyway, so he's uh, doing all that, but then uh, Ripley creeps up on him, or sneaks up on him, and makes him jump uh, unawares. And um, so is uh, she wants to talk to him about... Um, you know, him letting letting them in. And he said he were following orders. And she says, um, um, you know, when 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 Kane and Ash are off the ship, not Kane, Dallas and Kane are off the ship, she's in command, so she's third in command. And um and um and then she you know reminds him that he broke the regulation, you know, about quarantine and stuff like that. Uh, that's where he tells her that uh, the, the, the alien um, has a, a skin of, I don't know, polysaccharides or whatever that is. That's sugar, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, uh, and replaces its outer layers or something with polarised silicon, blah, blah, blah. Which makes it a tough little son of a bitch, he says. But, oh, there we go, protein polysaccharides, polarised silicon, blah, blah, blah. Um, all that. So this is where she's uh, chewing him out a little bit, not shouting and bawling, but just being calm. But anyway, um, so so we know where they speak, uh, where they stand with each other. She doesn't like him. Anyway, meanwhile, this this is the narcissus. That's the the shuttle. Um, 
apparently it's got two shuttles apparently um i think they're on like opposite sides of the ship or something like that i'm not quite sure but uh, i read somewhere that they're supposed to be two and they'll take three each but yet, yet you've got a seven crew <laughs> so just have to the captain has to go down with his ship i presume um but uh, they've only got one working shuttle apparently uh, i read that somewhere but, uh, it doesn't say it in the film um um, and this um, this area of the ship here, uh, presume it's on the underside. Um, they built like a big. It was described. It was like the trench from Star Wars. They just built that, and, and and I don't know if it's filmed upside down, if it's you know the other way up, or if it's it's actually filmed that way. I don't know. But um, Ridley Scott said, just fill it full of smoke, and it'll look cool and give it depth and all that. And uh, people said, but there's no atmosphere in space. No, but they're not in space, are they? They're on, they're on the planet. So anyway, but Ridley Scott didn't say that. He just said in the documentary, he just said you know, people said there's no atmosphere in space, and he says, well, there is now, mate, because that's what he's like, isn't he? Ridley Scott in films, he just he just does what he wants, and if it's historically wrong, he don't care, or scientifically wrong, he don't care, because he's a filmmaker. Uh, isn't that the Nostromo emblem or something? I don't know. I thought it was something to do with medical. You know about the Egyptian thing? Uh, Ash never said he was following Dallas's orders. Yes, he did. Well, he said he was given a direct order. Uh, it had two shuttles, but one was turned into a jacuzzi. Ash never said he was following Dallas. Yes, he was. Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> don't make me a liar, mate. Uh, on, go back again. Oh, I've gone too far. Da, da, da. You let him in. I was obeying a direct order, remember? See, he was following orders. When Dalton came off the ship, I am in command, she says. And he says, I forgot. But he didn't forget the rules of the you know science division and all that stuff. Anyway, right. Dallas is in the shuttle, listening to music. Um, oh, yes, they've got to go to the infirmary because it's the face hugger has come off his face, um, so to speak. Uh, we've got to go in and look for it now. Uh, but they leave the door wide open for ages. It could have, you know, for all they know, it could have scurried out, but uh, no. So they go looking around, poking around, looking for the, the face hugger. Uh, oh, look, my logos. That's the photonic thingamabob, and that's... Um, I forgot what that one is. <laughs> We've seen it, though, haven't we? Um, so they're looking for the face, because it's disappeared. Uh, oh, hang on. And then uh, she finds it. There's uh, Ripley. Hey, it does. It falls on her shoulder. Because it's a, you know, it's a prankster. <laughs> it makes a jump. Uh, a jump scare. And uh, apparently it's dead. So he's, anyway, so he's got it on the uh, on his table. It's got fingernails. Look, cool. Uh, and apparently this is just uh, this is I went to a, a fishmonger's and got um, oysters and cockles and mussels and blah 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 caviar and all that's just shoved in there just to make it look organic. And it works. It looks good. Um, oh, there, there he's got it on his table now. Um, Cockles and mussels alive, alive, oh. He's got more, like, pokey equipment that looks really awkward. You know, not for, like, delicate work, is it? <laughs> As he's poking away at it. But anyway. Anyway. Oh, I So she says, um, we've got to destroy it. And he says, who knows what it, this thing bled acid. Who knows what it's going to do when it's dead? And Ash says, I think it's safe to assume it's not a zombie. How does he know? Could be anything. Anyway, there you go. So anyway, uh, Dallas says, um, um, you know, it's uh, sci the science officer's, you know, final word because it's you know part of the science division. So, so she's not happy. Is um, is Ripley? She's saying, since when has standard procedure been to do what the science division says? And he says, you know, I've got to do. Standard procedure to do what the company tells me to do. Anyway. Space zombies, yes. 
Not using the Z word. Why not? Because it's ridiculous. That's why. Sean sure, sure of the dead line. <laughs> but anyway, so it's where we learned that uh, Ash isn't their regular science officer and he was replaced three days before the journey. So he we replaced, well, before the set off to wherever they got the 20 million tonnes of mineral ore, or were he replaced there to come back to Earth? I don't know. It doesn't say. But anyway, um, so that's where we learn, you know, he's a. An unknown quantity, nobody knows him, but anyway. And he asks how the repairs are going, and um, she says, oh, it's mostly done, but we're still blind below sea deck. He says, oh, we can take off without that. That's a bunch of horse poo. So, anyway, so they're taking off now. There we go. Off they go, back into space. Uh, there we go. Up they go. More music. Du, 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 du. Giving it all that. Struts retracted. Uh, they're heading into space to redock with the refinery, and now they're headed, they're headed out. Um, they're, they're relaxing a bit about what they're going to do, and um, uh, I think uh, uh, Dallas here says his, his made decision is going to freeze uh, Kane um, for the journey home. But Lambert has got bad news. This is where she tells him that they're still ten months from home. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. They're not, they're not going to have to stay awake, are they? They're going back to the old freezerinos, aren't they? So, but they're still 10 months away. So. Anyway, so they're heading uh, where he says they're going to um, freeze him. But then, oh, there we go. But then he gets a call from Ash. He said, you know, better come and see. Something's happened to Kane. And see, he's woke up and he's fine and he's just thirsty. And he has a remembers a dream about smothering, etc. So they think everything's lovely, and they're heading home. They're going back to the old freezerinos. So, but he says he wants something to eat, and it looks like he's eating noodles and stuff like that. Um, uh, by the way, what's the beer? Does it say? Uh, can't read it. Uh, uh, they needed an iron or clothes press on the ship. <laughs> Uh, blind blow sea dick. Now oh, they have movie night in the mess hall. Yes, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so having dinner. Oh, and Dallas says I'm buying. So they have to pay for the bloody meals. Probably, probably that's what corporations are like, aren't they? But anyway, so here he's eating away, and um, all right, um, Parker. Uh, so like insinuates he wants to. Um, Eat something else. And Lambert, you know, gets all... Because <laughs> they're all being sexist. Uh, oh, there's that logo again. Yeah, maybe it is the Nostromo logo then. Maybe it is, because he's got it. They've all got it, haven't they? Uh, so there we go. Or maybe it's the Wayland Yatan. No, it's not the Wayland Yatan. Maybe it's the old one. I've no idea. Anyway, right, hang on, let me see. Let me investigate. What the heck? Uh, Nostromo logo. Uh, yes, the Nostromo logo. Yes, it is. Um, very good, very good. So, yes, so um, you were right, weren't you? Uh, uh, Sci-fi quests were right. Uh, right. Anyway. Um. Anyway. Um. Kane starts coughing and and choking. Something's up there. Are you choking? Who did that bad, baby? And uh, this is where we all think of space balls now, don't we? But um, we'll try not to. But they're holding him down. Uh, it's the famous scene where you know they didn't tell the, the cast what were going to happen. Exactly. They knew roughly what was going to happen. But they didn't know there were going to be as much blood as there was. Uh, particularly Veronica Cartwright. Um, but anyway, so they hold him down. And he's trying to get a spoon in his mouth so he doesn't bite his tongue or swallow his tongue or whatever. Um, so they're struggling with him a bit. And um, then Ridley Scott yells, cut! And then they all must file out. And then they've got to put uh, prosthetics and stuff on John Hurt and all that and put him under the table. But then something bursts through his, through his chest and he starts writhing more. And this is where Veronica Cartwright gets covered in blood, because out it comes. Ah! 
There you go, as he gets covered in blue. She actually fell over as well. There's like a a deleted scene or whatever, isn't there, that they didn't put back in, where you just see a slip over and you see a cowboy boot <laughs> fly up in the air. But uh, anyway, she gets covered in blood, squirting it all out, and it's actually real blood that they got from you know, an abattoir or a butcher's or whatever. But uh, anyway, out it comes. Bless it. Oh my, that's, uh, that's Veronica Cartwright actually going, oh my God. Oh, God. And that was actually genuine. Anyway, here it comes. Has he got an eye? Has he got eyes there? Oh, no, and it's just the uh, way it looks. So out it comes. It has a look round, and then it gets its straw butter and its cane, and it starts going, hello, my baby, hello, my darling, doing all that. Yes, it does that, yes. <laughs> yes, it says all that. And uh, dances off, and they all go, check, please. Damn that film, eh? <laughs> uh, anyway, it looks round at them, and they're all like, oh, crikey, and then it scuttles off across the table. It, 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 it screeches at them, and um, this is another Roger Dickin uh, construction, by the way. It screeches at them and rushes off across the table. Whee! <laughs> So now they've got an alien to find. They're like, what the bloody hell's going on here? And obviously Ash is now, uh, not Ash, Kane is now dead. And um, so they've got to find an this alien. So, all right, but first they're going to get rid of um, Kane's body. Anyway, factoid. That song written to mock the telephone and the slang kids using the word hello. All right. Yes, because originally, before telephones were invented, hello was just a word that was used as like an exclamation of surprise, like, hello, I wasn't expecting that there, you know, like, you know, gosh, well, that sort of word, wasn't it? But then telephones came along and people used that word to say, you know, to, as a greeting, didn't they? And it's become a normal greeting now. So there you go. Amazing. Uh, I have a big one. Oh, right. What, on the Red Nose, is it Red Nose Burglars? Winker's song. It would also go on to be on That's Life, wouldn't it? I don't know his real name. I forgot his real name. Uh, but we were on That's Life, wouldn't it? We were supposed to say Ahoy. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Ahoy, Ahoy. Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sure it was that. Something. Ahoy, Ahoy. You could have said it twice. Is that what Alexander Graham Bell wanted or something like that? Or whoever, Marconi, I can't remember, one of them. Anywho, right, so they're doing a burial in space. They're getting rid of um, uh, Kane's body. Why don't they just freeze it and take it home, you know, for his family, you'd think, wouldn't you? But no, they're getting rid of it. Uh, ejecting him into space. Uh, so off he goes. Uh, did they use this in something? Did they use that in Blade Runner as well? Have I seen... Uh, Sure, I've seen this in something else. That that graphic, I could be wrong. So off he goes. We uh, apparently uh, that's actually you know the real that model, a trench model. Um, they actually just they just just fired it. <laughs> I think he used a I don't know if he used a, a catapult or something. Just, they just fired it down down the trench and cut before it dipped down before gravity took over. Uh, right, so anyway, they're carrying on. Right, this is what weapons they've got. Obviously, they've got all the weapons, haven't they? Because they said let's break out the weapons, but they must have found weapons that won't puncture its skin. Uh, they've got a flamethrower, and uh, Brett has set up um, like um, is that now or later? I can't remember. If it's now, I'll, whatever. Uh, like a cattle prod, and he said it, it shouldn't break its skin. Uh, it shouldn't injure it. it says or. Oh, unless its skin is thinner than ours, uh, which I don't think it is. Uh, but, you know, they, they don't want to puncture it, do they? Um, oh, there we go, yes. But don't put your hand on the end of it. Uh, and uh, Ash has designed a way to track it. Uh, his motion sensor, a rudimentary motion sensor. Sapphic says, hello is an alteration of hello, hello, which came from old high German, hala, hola, emphatic imperative of halon, halon, to fetch, used especially in hailing a ferryman. Very good. 
Obviously, we all know that Lionel Richie invented the word, didn't he? Hello! Is it me you're looking for? Anyway, I've not been looking out for bloody labels and stickers. Have as loads there. Look, they're all lit up. Anyway. Uh, right, so they're going to split up now. Let's split up and search for clues. And um, Ripley's going with Parker and Brett and Lambert and Ash and Dallas are presumably going somewhere else. Uh, we never see where they go, I don't think. But anyway. Uh, and they've got a net that they want to catch it in. Because remember, they think it's just this little creature, don't they? That they've uh, got to the Google. Yes, it's a wonder. Hey, Mr. Ferryman, ferry me banana. Or whatever. Daylight come. Can you sing that anymore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it problematic? Will it be in the new Beetlejuice? Who knows? Uh, anyway. Stan, is it Stan Friedman? Is it Stan Friedman? Too loud, man, too loud. Remember that. Anyway. Anyway, um, right, so, they're splitting up and looking for the creature. Right, so, uh, while they're doing some faffing and fiddling, because uh, power's out in that area, they said they thought they'd fixed it. Um, she goes into this little area. A cool little, some sort of vehicle, whatever the hell that for, I don't know, but it's cool. Why didn't they use that to go to the ship? You know, the derelict. Couldn't they ride it? What is it for? No idea. Um, anyway, so they're in there. And they pick up a signal. Uh, they're entering this area. What we got here then? Um, ooh, right. This is a new one. Um, it's all dirty, so we're entering a dirty area. But we've got to look up these. Right, we've got that one. Uh, maintenance. That's the maintenance. We've got that one. And we've got that one up there, haven't we? Bulkhead door. Uh, what were the other one? There were three, weren't there? Were there? Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, hazardous area or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, hazard warning. Anyway. And Ash just happened to invent an early tracker. Yes, he did. Uh, yes, the old um, micro variations in air density. Um, so if it moves... It'll detect it, won't it? Uh, so how did it pick up the cat in a locker? Don't know, but we'll get to that. It's within five metres what they've picked up. Uh, the song will start playing and Jenna Ortega will say, No, that's not cool. Record scratch, end song, yes. She said, We're not allowed to sing that anymore. It's problematic. Uh, thank God it wasn't Rachel Ziegler. Anyway, right, so they picked up a signal, so here they go. Oh, that's kind of reminiscent of the beginning of Aliens, isn't it? That shot, but never mind. Um, there goes our salvage, guys. Or oh, fellas, whatever he says. Uh, Michael changes in air density, my ass. Anyway, so, here we go. Oh, look, more helmets and stuff. More cool things, as Paul Chato would say. More gear porn and... Whatever these are, these lockers or something, aren't they? 1516, whatever that means. Is that a, have any meaning? No idea. And the power droid there, look, gonk. <laughs> I know it's not, I know it's not. They kind of remind me, it's like a, it's like a big giant drone off uh, Silent Running, isn't it? You know, Huey, Dewey and Louie, which we'll probably get to one day on uh, Magnificent Mondays, but anyway. Right, so they're picking it up and it's... Uh, it turns out, um, here we go, get ready, get ready with the net. They open it up, and, oh, for God's sake, see the bloody, oh, there we go. They open it up, and it's, when it, come on, there we go. Ah, it's the cat. Speaking of cats, she's behaving herself, isn't she? My cat's over there asleep. Uh, yeah, cheeky monkey. I thought she was going to start, but she hadn't done yet. Um... Eject her pod to keep the salvage. <laughs> That's probably what they'd have done in real life, wouldn't they? Uh, I love Silent Running. Yes, it's an amazing film. Anyway, it's the cat. It's Jonesy. How did it get in there? Did the alien put it in? Don't know. <laughs> but it got in that locker somehow and closed the door behind it. Uh, and how did, how did the thing detect it if it were in the locker? Don't know, but it did. Um, but um, 
Brett, let's let's Jonesy go. And they'll say, oh, no, don't do that. Because, you know, we might pick it up on the tracker again. So they say, you go by yourself, Brett, and get that cat. So off he goes. Remember, they don't know they're looking for a big, a dangerous, huge alien. I mean, even that little one looked dangerous, but whatever. I mean, it had silver teeth, and remember, it's acid blood and all that stuff. Uh, have you done the 1989 Deep Star 6 by any chance? Not yet, but like I say, that, that's that's probably in the list at some point. You know, Henway and all that. <laughs> What's a Henway? Anyway. Uh, right, so uh, Brett goes off to look for the cat. Here he is. Jonesy. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. Not talking to you. Um, so he's going through these uh, these rooms where he's seeing things, you know, we're seeing the insides of the ship. Uh, don't know what all this bit is. Um, I think Ridley Scott has said what this area is and I've forgotten. I bet sci-fi quest knows, but I can't remember. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, oh, he finds the cat, it's behind it. Whatever the hell this lot is, I don't know. This looks like a big engine or something, doesn't it? I don't know. They look like shells of from a cannon or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, big... Gun or something off a ship. God knows what they are. Um, about three four pounds, yeah. <laughs> Headway. Uh, anyway, he finds the cat. Uh, here it comes. It comes running out here. Uh, but then he also finds... Uh, it goes, and then it goes running into this other room. <laughs> like that. Uh, but he also finds that. It shedded its skin. You'd think there'd be a lot more skin as well at some point, but never mind. But um, we see that it's it shed its skin look. Uh, so it's not uh, the little creature anymore. Um, but they don't know what's happened. They need to be like in between <laughs> sloughings, wouldn't you? But never mind, doesn't matter. So he just drops that and then heads through this door. We get a slow dolly through this door. Like I said, they won't make it a film like this nowadays because they'd be bored. Look, we're still going. Uh, into this other room, which I think is the um, the uh, landing struts. Uh, that's the, supposed to be the bottom of one of the landing struts. So the huge, you can see it going up into the ceiling. Why is there loads of water coming down? No idea, but there is. Uh, we get a glimpse of the alien in here. Well, not a glimpse, we get a full-on look at it, but... Uh, in he comes. Don't know what this is. Uh, like, <laughs> like me, I've pressed my belly through the wall or something like that. But never mind. Don't know what it's supposed to be. Uh, so he, in he comes. Um, I said we, we can see it in, in a couple of shots. I think you can... I don't know when. I'm not sure when. We do get a good look at it in a minute. But I, I think... In me, you know, Mandela effect brain, I'm thinking you can see it you can glimpse it up above, but maybe you can't, I don't know. But Maybe you could in the theatrical version, I don't know. I know in this director's cut you do see more of it. Anyway, it lets the water run onto his face, and I'm sure... I've read the book, and I can't remember how it described it. I'm sure it says something like, it's warm water, and it's it knows it's clean and all that, because it's, it, it's for something or other. I don't know what it's off for. It's something with the reactors or something like that, and it's from the coolant system and it drips down through the landing struts and and, all, and I don't know but anyway he lets it drip onto his face anyway and he has a drink of it as well because he opens his mouth and then as he's doing that we look we we see it there it is we see it hanging there sw <laughs> just swinging in the chains because all those chains are there for some reason and um you know, they're all in the documents all saying, and you can't make out it's there. Yes, you can, it's there, look. <laughs> it's obviously not supposed to be there, is it? But anyway, there it is. They're trying to make because it's supposed to be like biomechanical, so it can merge, you know, with the machinery and stuff like that, you know, in, in appearance. So you can't see it against the walls and stuff like that. But you can, it's there. Anyway, so it's there, swinging in the chains. Uh like a Gene Kelly song. Swinging in the chains. Anyway. Uh, this is one of the scenes in the special edition. The big chap is hanging on the chains. Yes, he is. Yes, which we just done. Swinging in the chains. Uh, 
He's swinging in the chains. <laughs> Just swinging in the chains. Anyway, so I was uh, looking for the cat. There we go. He's still calling for the cat. And I'm sure we get another another glimpse of it. Maybe we do. I'm sure we did in the theatrical version. You know, like from a you see it up there, but not close up. Like we saw it first time, close up. But I could be wrong. Maybe they've changed it. Or maybe I'm just remembering wrong. But we see Jonesy there. He don't want to come out. There you go. Here come Jonesy. So we haven't seen it, have we? And um, calls to the cat, but the cat don't want to come. And they got it with... Um, they made the cat, like, you no know, hiss and back off by showing it another cat, basically. But in the, oh, there we go. In the background, uh, we see the alien drop down. That's where we see it. it's full form. Uh, it's grown quick, hasn't it? But uh, but then again, we don't know how long, how much time's passed, do we? Between you know it, it running off in the cafeteria area, the kitchen, whatever, the rec room, and now how long has it been? It can't be that long, can it? it can't be days, has it? But not that you'd think. But uh, anyway, so there it is behind him. So obviously senses it, the cat's not looking at him. So he turns round and there it is. See the good old, uh, again, Giger inspired. Uh, but this is built by Carlo Ramboldi, who did the Aliens in Close Encounters and obviously E.T. Uh, he did the uh, the big chap, as Sci-Fi Quest calls him. Um, I wish Disney Plus had the director's cut. Is it just the theatrical version? Uh, it took the entire crew out in less than 24 hours. Yes, yes, she said that, didn't she? So it's not that long, is it? Uh, it's grown quickly. So, so when you see people moaning about the length of time, you know, in like Alien versus Predator, in the length of time between the face hugger and the thing popping out and all that, the gestation, it's quick in this as well, isn't it? 24 Earth hours. <laughs> oh dear. What is an hour? What What's the definition of an hour? I know it's a 124th of a day, but what? I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, it, dra it grabs him. It don't, it don't, uh, does it actually? It do yes, it does. It gets him with its, you know, its thing. There we go. Out it comes and it, uh, oh my, it gets him through his hat. Look. Gets him through his hat with its projectile second mouth or tongue, whatever you want to call it. So it gets him through his hat. And then drags him up into the, uh, lifts him up into the duct work, chain work. Jones, he watches on, probably smacking his chops at all the blood that's going to come dripping down. Anyway, in comes Ripley and Parker. They hear him scream. They say, oh, Brett. But then all the blood comes dribbling down. Go, oh no, we're getting covered in blood. Let's just stand here and go, oh, what's this blood? I'd be running like mad. Is that Sigourney Weaver or is that a stunt double? Don't look. I know she's at a funny angle, but is, is it actually her or. It, it's got to be, hasn't it? But it doesn't look like, does it? Did they think. Is it her? Did they think because she's looking up, you know? Sigourney might not have been available that day. This is a pickup shot. I don't know. It could be her. I don't know. Yes, zoom and enhance. Uh, fourth quadrant. Uh, uh, 123 by 42. Enhance. Because <laughs> I'm deckered. The big chap is not the same type we've seen. The other film situational adaptation is my thought, which is why Romulus... Has changes made to the face huggers. It all depends, I suppose. Yeah, like, like you said, situational adaptation. I mean, James, um, James, Ke uh, J yeah, James Cameron said this one looks different to the ones in Aliens because he said when the first born, um, that's why it's got a smooth, what do you call it, carapace, whatever, over its head, um, and he says that that sort of like goes away. Uh, after a while, and um, uh, becomes like like we saw in Aliens, all the the bumpy lumpy heads, um, Klingon heads. <laughs> That's what James Cameron said. But uh, is that canon? Don't know. 
Right, so, right, so, you know, oh, it was big, it was big as a man and all that. It, it took him up into the, there we go, in the, it took him away and it's using the air ducts to move around, blah, blah, blah. So they've got to decide what to do. So uh, if it's using the air ducts, they're going to use it, they're going to flush it into a certain area and blow it out into space. Uh, oh, Kane's son. Anyway. Um... So, oh, why? Uh, they said um, the only thing they don't know, like I say, is, is temperature. You know, will temperature hurt it? They know that. I don't know. <laughs> don't, they don't know what will kill it, do they? Because they don't know anything about it. But um, that's why he's going to use the the flamethrowers or incinerator units. Uh, all after incinerators. But anyway. So um, uh, Dallas is going to go in and um, try and uh, flush it out or flush it into, not flush it, but force it into a certain area so they can blow it out into space. Right. And there they are shutting all the, uh, the the bulkhead doors and all that. So here we are in the, in the ducts with these weird iris things. So in he goes. Uh, Lambert's on... Uh, tracking duty i don't know how this works how's this working when he's miles away in the duct somewhere and that's he's just got that point in in a general is it is it, why is it i don't get it <laughs> i don't just have the mechanics of how this machine works but anyway um in alien 3 it's different because it's a male and birth from a cow not the dog in the theatrical version the first one could just be a male birth from a human. Well, yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, they're all, I think they're asexual, aren't they? You know, really. You know, not, I don't think they're, they're not males or females, are they? They'd be like a, a, a beehive or whatever. The, you know, the, the, when the, the eggs hatch, they just pick, they pick one egg or whatever, don't they? They're the beehive. They just pick one egg and that becomes the queen, doesn't it? And all the rest are just the regular bees. Anyway. Uh, right. Where were we? Anyway, yeah, so sure. she's telling him where the uh, the thing is. So, um, so off he goes into the ducts um, at the third junction and he's firing his flamethrower every now and again. And uh, they pick it up and um, so he's, uh, there he goes, heading... Uh, in that direction, and uh, there we go. And then they lose it, and uh, so they tell him to stay still. And uh, so he starts getting uh, starts getting worried now. Does Dallas? He says, "Tell me, tell me where it is." And then he finds some goo on the floor, um, like ants. The males mate and die. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> They're aliens. Like Arcturians. Doesn't matter with this Arcturian, baby. I've said that already, I know, but uh, <laughs> don't overthink it. Uh, it's getting worried now, so where is it? But then suddenly she says, it's heading right for you. And um, he doesn't know which way to go. So he heads another way. And for some reason, heads right into where it is. But um, um, anyway, have we? Hang on, we haven't got there yet. So he's, he's there, he climbs down here. Right, let's get to the... And then we see the uh, alien do its jazz hands. Oh, we've gone, gone too far. Uh, turns round, and there it is. Ta da! <laughs> there we go. Get ya! You're, ne you're it! And it runs off. <laughs> uh, his turn with its rubbery, bendy hands, fingers. Sparkle fingers, yes. Sparkle fingers. Or jazz hands. Whatever. Uh, and then for some reason we get interference. On what? <laughs> on the film? We get interference on the film. I think it's supposed to be the tracker thing, isn't it? But whatever. So they've lost, lost contact with Dallas. Um, so there we go. Parker's obviously gone in and he's, he's found the incinerator unit. He says, no blood, no Dallas, nothing. It's just, he's just gone. It's taken him away. So maybe it knocked him out or something. Or maybe just dragged him off screaming and kicking. I don't know. But 
So now Ripley's in charge, and um, but uh, I think Parker he wants to be in charge, and apparently there were the butting heads on set um, because he's a big fella, is Yafet Koto, and um, he was pushing. Uh, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney, Weaver's, uh, Sigourney Weaver's uh first film, by the way. Yes, we'll see Dallas again, yes. We will. Spoilers. <laughs> um and he was kind of pushing her all the time, but then you know she'd at f at first she'd like he'd push her and she'd like run off crying, you know, because he's a girl a girl. Uh but she toughened up and stood up to him and got his uh, got his respect uh, in the end. But uh, so she's decided, as uh, as Ripley, that uh, they're going to carry on with um, Dallas's plan, and they're going to, you know, lure it into one of the things and blow it out into space. Um, Lambert wants to to take the shuttle and take their, you know, blow up the ship and make the take their chances in the shuttle. And this way, she says the shuttle won't take four, so it'll only take three with the crew of seven. <sighs> Crap! It's the Titanic, isn't it? Of uh, <laughs> of its of its day. But anyway, um, and I'm not drawing any straws. I'm killing the goddamn thing right now. That's what he says. Um, so um, that's what they're gonna go. Gonna go. Blow it out into space. And Ash is saying, if it means killing it, it's not acceptable. Um, it says it's the, the subtitles that says there. If it means killing it, it's acceptable to me. But he said it's not acceptable to me. Did Ash? Because she says obviously it means killing it. They've got the subtitles wrong. Um, oh, and then she asks Ash. You know, has he made any progress in his uh, you know his studies of the creature? And um, yes, Diamond Dallas Page. Yes. Boom. <laughs> It's me, it's me, it's DDP. Doing his yoga. <laughs> uh, anyway, with his diamond cutter. E, they were the days, weren't they? Um, uh, WCW and all that. Anyway, uh, she's asking uh, Ash how he's going with his uh, his studies of the creature. And he says that he and Mother are still collating. And she's like, what? Uh, just carry on doing, you know, doing nothing or whatever. So she's, she'll get her own answers from Mother, so she goes in, because she's in charge now. She suddenly gets the golden ticket to get into Mother's room. And um, so in she goes. I want to see now, actually, to see. She gets in. Does the door close instantly behind her? Yes, it does, and we can see the door, right? So Ash is in there as well, and we didn't hear him come in. So what, did, he, did he go in on his hands and knees while, while we weren't looking? I don't know, but... Anyway, <laughs> she logs in uh, to the little monitor that's miles away. I, I can't see what's on it. Has she got one there with, where she is? I don't know. But she wants to know what's going on there. Good old interface 2037. Have these been, they've been redone, these, haven't they, for the, you know, the, the director's cut or whatever? Because look, that's all uh, snazzy. I bet it didn't look like that, you know, the original version. Um, she's asking about, you know, what's going on with this alien, so to speak. And, um, and basically she finds out that, um, um, the company wants them to go out there and investigate this, capture the creature, bring it back, you know, all of the things, all of the, um, objectives are, you know, null and void, crew is expendable. So that's what we learn about. Uh, oh, here we go. There we go. In, uh, priority one, insure. Don't mean ensure. Return of organism for analysis. All other considerations secondary. Crew expendable. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, mother and I are still calibrating. Hinting. Well, they're collating, aren't they? <laughs> Collating. We used to have a machine at the computer place we used to work called the decolator, a, you know, a decolator. Because collating is when you're bringing things together, isn't it? We used to have a machine called the decolator, which used to separate papers. You know, a big long... Back in the day, when you used to have big long streams of printing paper, and it used to have like... Um, oh, what they call it now? That like carbon paper in between. So you could print multiple copies at once. 
in the olden days. We used to have a machine that used to separate them, called the decalator. And if that went wrong, it was fun and games, because paper and everything were everywhere. But uh, anyway, that's by the by. Right. <laughs> I used to work in a, a computer place uh, with an old, um, big um, uh, Honeywell DPS-8 computer, uh, uh, mainframe computer uh, with big printers and stuff like that and big, big tape drives and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, mimeograph, no, not me. Mim- well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, the carbon paper that, you know, to make two copies at once. I used to have them in. Uh, to take that out. Uh, and then we had a machine called the burster, which used to separate the, the pages of the printout. And if you get your finger trapped in there, like I did once, it hurts. Right, anyway. Right, where were we? Right, so this is where we see Ash. There we go. Ash has appeared. We didn't hear him coming. Maybe we just didn't notice because we were focusing on the screen. Uh, she freaks out and uh, grabs hold of him and throws him against the wall. And he kind of freaks out a little bit. He does a little f- weird look on his face. So she's, oh, no! so she's acting. Um, oh, she wants to get through. She can't get out. Oh, look. Labels. We haven't seen that one, have we? What's this one? <laughs> A plus and a minus. Uh, there we go. Astronic systems, electronics. What's astronic systems? I don't know, but it sounds cool. Probably something to do with space, I imagine. I still miss tearing the hold edges off my paper when I finish printing. Yes, we had that. Yes, and we had the. Uh, what do they call them? We had a machine to do, to do that as well. And if that went wrong, fun and games there as well. <laughs> oh dear. Right, where were we? Oh, I Ash won't let her go. This is where we see that uh, he's leaking. In a minute. Oh, for God's sake, it must be in a minute. Hang on. Where is it? Come on, see him leaking. Where are you? Where are you? Come on. Come on. Leak. Leak, damn you. Why aren't you leaking? Getting on my nerves. Maybe it's later. Right, so. Oh, she can't get out. Tries another way. Ooh, have we seen that one? Have we seen that one? Let's have a look. Um, we've got that one, bulkhead door. Um, what was that other one? Oh, was that one. Storage. Oh, yes, we have seen that one, haven't we? So you haven't seen this one, intercom and all these medical life support and stuff like that. Exhaust. Have we seen them yet? Radiation. Oh, have we seen that one? Oh no, high radioactivity we see. I haven't seen radiation hazard or galley. Not that I've noticed. Anyway. Uh, if you prick him, does he not leak? Yes, he does. <laughs> uh, I did mean collating, but I had to pull a J for a minute. Okay. Um, which J? J, drunk 3 pure J, or J from Sci Fi, Sci Trek? Does he get words wrong as well? Anyway, um, he won't let her out. He keeps closing the doors. Ah, here he is leaking now. There he is. He's leaking now. Look, so because he's uh, we saw him drink lots of milk earlier on. I presume it was milk. We saw him drink that earlier on. So he's leaking that out of him. <laughs> um, oh, sidetrack, J. Uh, anyway, uh, she's got a nosebleed. I don't know how that sound. Maybe she's just stressed. I don't know. Uh, oh, more labels. Uh, that's a gravity suit or something in it. Ladderway and whatever that one was. I forgot already. <laughs> Astronics, something like that, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, so he grabs hold of us, starts throwing her about now uh, and making funny noises, going. <laughs> oh, look, Archmage Fraser arrived, that mysterious man from Twitch. Uh, and he's on Twitch. Yes, he is on Twitch. <laughs> Uh, let's make sure we're still going, by the way. We're still going. Yes, we're going on you. Still going on Rumble. And we're still going on YouTube. It's excellent connection, it says still. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Milk. We had loads of milk. Uh, for some reason, I've been drinking a lot of milk for the last few days. And I get it delivered in big uh, four-pint containers. And um, so with loads of milk, so I had to make loads of rice pudding. <laughs> I had to get rid of some milk. 
I found some long grain rice in the pantry. I don't, I don't know how long it's been there, but it was out of date. But uh, made some nice rice pudding. So there we go. Anyway, uh, oh ah, yes. So, so she, her nose is bleeding for some reason. Maybe it's stress. I don't know. She might have high blood pressure. That's all I know. Uh, there we go. He grabs hold of her head and she pulls a bit of that and goes get loads of her hair in his hand and then he starts throwing her about and making his funny noises. Going, beep, beep, beep. Uh, milkman still come around. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they just knocked on my door one day and they said we're delivering milk in this area. Um, you know, do you do you want to you know get some milk off us? So I said yeah, whatever. Pardon me. Support local businesses and all that. You were preparing for Alien with all the milk. Yes, I might start leaking soon. <laughs> and going... And making weird noises. Anyway, it's throwing her about this area. What is this area, anyway? Uh, oh, it's the... Oh, is this the that's wreck room or something? Uh, with the, the dipping birds. Oh, look, there's the... Uh, oh, they've got two. So notice they've got two... Um, what they call them? Motion trackers. Oh, yeah, they split into two groups, didn't they? So he must have made two of them. Anyway, um, throwing it about. Um, and in the documentary and all that, I didn't get a chance to listen to his commentary because um, essentially I forgot. I got busy doing my review of Fallout and stuff like that and <laughs> I forgot to listen to the to watch the film with Ridley Scott's commentary. But anyway, in the documentary, he talk, keeps talking about how this is Asher's first sexual experience. And I thought, what are they talking about? You're just throwing her around. Uh, I'm thinking of ways to kill her. And, and don't look at the pictures in the background. I mean, the pictures of blurry pictures of lady with ladies with their boobies out and then fried eggs for some reason. <laughs> is that a comment? Let me get past this before YouTube has a conniption fit. Um... Anyway, so there she's knocked out, is uh, is Ripley, and he picks up a, I presume it's a uh, adult magazine. Um, so this, obviously in twenty one twenty two, there's no internet, <laughs> you know, for those sorts of pleasures. Uh, still have magazines, I, I presume it is anyway, and he curls it up in a. There you go. Now let's get out of it. Get out of it because YouTube will go pl mental. Um, he rolls up the magazine and tries to shove it in her mouth for some reason. Maybe this is why Ridley Scott thinks it's like a sexual thing. I don't know, but um, uh, this is what he's doing. And uh, it's like choking her. Get past, get past that bit, bloody hell. There you go. Shoves it in her mouth and she's like, oh, what the? And remember, he's a robot. Uh, oh, we don't know that yet, do we? We just know he's got white sweat. <laughs> uh, milk sweats. Uh, so he's doing all that, shoving that in the mouth, uh, probably hurting the teeth because he's probably strong. Uh, good to know that physical media makes a comeback. Yes, one-handed literature, I imagine. <laughs> uh, actually, they are starting to bring back milkmen and milk floats. Never should have stopped. Thanks supermarkets for ruining that and watering down the milk. Pasteurised used to mean pasture-fed. I thought it meant pasteurised because it was the process by Louis Pasteur. Uh, which, as I says, you boil the milk or something like that, don't you, to get impurities out, something like that. Uh, named after Louis Pasteur, not because it's from a pasture. Anyway. Anyway, right. Uh, so he's doing that. He's uh, trying to kill her with the magazine. And uh, there he goes. And looking really weird. Oh, I'm going to get you. Uh, I had to imagine it would become Bilbo Baggins, isn't it? But... Uh, Anyway, Parker and uh, Lambert arrive and pull him off and throw him across the room and he's, he starts freaking out and going bleh, 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 and spitting... Oh, I've gone too far. And spitting milk out of his... Oh, for God's sake. And spitting milk out of his mouth for some reason because he drunk too much milk earlier on. Uh, and then uh, Parker whacks him across the head in a minute. Um... Uh, God's sake. <laughs> there we go. Parker whacks it. Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. Oh, gone too far. I want to get it where we, you know, the reveal. There we go. There we go. Parker hits him and we see that he's a robot. He's a goddamn robot. Uh, 
pasteurised and homogenised. And of course, as Benny Hill would say in the song uh, Ernie, um, where, um, oh, I've got a name now, in the song, um, Ernie said, you want pasteurised, because pasteurised is best. She said, Ernie, I'll be happy if it comes up to me chest. And that tickled old Ernie. Ernie. And he drove the fastest milk cart in the West. Great song. Used to make my uh, my knees cry, that song, at the end. Because <laughs> he dies. Spoilers. Anyway, speaking of dying and milk, um, we've learned that Ash is a robot. He's a goddamn robot. And, um... But, uh, hang on, I'm, a, I'm not on... There we go. Ah, for God's sake. Stop it. Oh, bloody hell. Hey, it's an android. And then he says, he's a goddamn robot. Uh, what's that? What's that that comes flying off? <laughs> Something comes flying off there. Uh, and apparently there's a, a small person now. It's not uh, Ian Holm. There's a small person in the thing going like that, looking like a robot. Probably told him, look like a robot. So doing all that in, in the... Uh, uh, there we go. In the... Uh, Costume. There you go. I'm a robot with my head off. I am James Doohan doing the voice of Data. <laughs> um, there we go. So he's beating him up. And there we go. So it, anyway, it finally expires. He's a goddamn robot. Or as uh, Ronald Shusset calls him, is a robot. Is a robot. Anyway, all I know, I miss. Being able to spoon the cream from the bottle ooh, and eating it so I could have milk on my cereal. Yes, the cream at the top. You don't see that now, though, do you? The cream at the top. But I get, like, skimmed milk, you know, healthy. <laughs> anyway. Right. So... Oh, and it, it grabs hold of him again. But anyway, right. So I think this moves now. I want to see now before we get here. They're trying to reactivate him in a minute. Right. Uh, Ripley's trying to reactivate him. I'm sure his finger, this obviously a real hand, you know. And, uh, obviously, an ex, uh, it's not Ian Holmes' hand. It's somebody else's. And I'm sure it moves before, before she does something. So I just want to see... <laughs> Probably get a copyright strike now for this. Because Fox have been a pain for copyright strikes or claims lately. I'm sure one of his fingers moved. Or I might have dreamt it. <laughs> or imagined it. Or blinked. Sometimes you blink and you think something's moved, doesn't it? Look, look, his fingers moving, look. And he hadn't, uh, she, hadn't, she hadn't reactivated him yet. That's what I saw. Maybe maybe he's just got a little bit of power going through his uh, his systems, but um, but anyway, she's gonna she's gonna reactivate him in a minute. Uh, she's put some power in into his uh, into his balls. <laughs> it's all these glass balls inside, uh, and then we get the worst cut possibly ever in film, even worse. Probably than that one in Poltergeist that is bizarre, but uh, here we see her. We see her putting the the head. Down. Princess, bloody hell! No, she. Oh no, won't get. I wouldn't get through a stream without her starting. Right, bear with me. I'm gonna let her out. Unbelievable. She must have been busting or something for a wee. <laughs> she went flying out. Hey. Uh, plot hole, turn it off. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go back again. The worst, worst cut ever. Right, we see with the, obviously the fake head. And then, um, there we go. Just a cut to that. To, to Ian Holmes' real head is obviously under the table. Why didn't they just? Why did they just do that cut? Why? Why didn't they just do a shot of I don't know Parker looking down and then cut back to that? 
you know, like a, to separate it, it just looks rubbish. You'd think, even in the director's cut, you'd think they'd change it, wouldn't you? They could just, all they needed was a shot of Parker or Lambert or somebody else. Just a cutaway, a, you know, cutaway shot, just to separate them. But no, they did that. I'll, I will demonstrate again how bad it is. There you go, that's it. Worst cut ever in film history. <laughs> I uh, wonder how Ripley knew how to reactivate Ash, yet alone Bishop, in three. Uh, well, they might know about um, you know, robots, androids or whatever, but um, maybe they just didn't realise one of their crew or one. Because uh, it's Hyperdyne Systems, model 120A2, you know, the twitchy ones, isn't it? That's what it is. That's what he is, isn't it? So maybe they do know about them, but maybe they're just surprised that one of their crew turned out to be one. Um, but anyway... Because we know that they do have them, um, because we, we've seen, you know, after the fact, you know, we know in Prometheus that they do have them, um, that happened before this, didn't it, with Michael and all that, or David, whatever the hell they're called. <sighs> anyway. Right. So they get him going again, and they're asking now, how can they kill it? And he says, you can't kill it, it's the perfect life form, blah, blah, blah. Um... You know, it reiterates that the company wanted it back, wanted to bring the alien back, all other um, priorities rescinded and all that stuff, crew expendable, blah, blah, blah. Um, and its perfection's matched only by its hostility. Uh, but um, anyway, so it gives them, you know, you have my sympathies and all that, and then she, she he smiles, <laughs> another bad cut. Um, he smiles and she whacks him and then be cut to the <laughs> the fake head and it's, obviously they've still put the smile on but it doesn't look right it looks like bloody joker doesn't it it's like um um uh, jack nicholson in the joker but uh ridley scott said it that happened because the 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 foam or whatever sh shrank i don't know it didn't they just didn't get it quite right did they anyway uh, I cut to Sigourney's bum before cutting to Ash. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> she ain't got much of a bum, though, I must admit. But uh, anyway, there he is. You know what he reminds me of? He looks like Sam Neill. <laughs> you know, from Jurassic Park and other stuff. I don't know why, it just reminds me of Sam Neill. Anyway, there you go. We're going to blow up the ship. we have got goddamn time. I don't know. I don't know if they said that. I don't know. <laughs> so they're going to get on the shuttle. Now that they're down to three... Which they were anyway, weren't they? Because um, um, Ash wasn't a person, was it, in the end? But never mind. Right, so, but they need to get some stuff, some... Uh, oh, my, they burn him as well, by the way. Yeah, burn. Where, where the holes for his eyes and all that? He's just like a solid head. But anyway, never mind. So they burned him up. Um, would I get cancelled for doing a video on the sexiest bums in movies? Definitely not. <laughs> nuke the site from orbit it's the only way to be sure but they're in deep space they're going to nuke it kind of how many reactors is it has it got three reactors because there's like at the end spoilers there's three explosions in there how, why is there three explosions massive ones I don't know but anyway there we've got need coolant for the air support system that's what they're going for to where uh, uh, Lambert and Parker are going to go somewhere they're going down wherever that is I don't know, maintenance or something. For the uh, canisters of coolant. And she's going to prepare the shuttle. Uh, so here we go. Here we see the uh, the Narcissus, which I've got on the micro machines. I think, I think I've think i got a few of them uh, over there in, me, uh, in the shrine. <laughs> over there. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's anything uh, that stands out. Got some numbers there. 56, 23. Whatever that's there for, don't know. Uh, you'll be fine, but you need to include all genders. Yes, you've got to have uh, bums of all um, denominations. <laughs> uh, dear. And and you got to sing the um, Black Ab no, um yeah Black is it Black Abbott's song, um, My Little Bum. <laughs> Once upon a time I had a little white bum. That's it, little white bum, which might be problematic in itself. But anyway, never mind. 
Right. So she's uh, getting the shuttle ready and um, Lambert and Parker are going to get the canisters of coolant from Downy Maintenance. Uh, so she's doing all that. Um, there you go. So they're doing all that. Check the bottles. He's rolling the canisters down. Uh, oh, wow. She's looking for the cat. The cat scares her. I think sod the cat. Sod the cat. But, you know, women. Women and cats. I mean, I love cats. But, you know, in a situation like this, I'd be like, you know, I'll get over it. <laughs> if the cat's not there... In the, if it's jumping out and scaring me and running off, bugger it. If it's there and it lets me pick it up and put it in a cat container thing, fine. But otherwise, sod the cat. But there we go, if she gets it. All right, and then we, for some reason, there's a big spotlight on uh, Lambert for this now. She's going to sing a song. She's under the super trooper. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, oh, Tom Green's boom song. I don't know that one. I don't know that one. Explosions in the vacuum of space wouldn't happen like in the movies that likely just vaporise, no big explosion. I, th I think it depends on what if what's feeding it, doesn't it? If there's if there's gases feeding it, then it'll do all that, won't it? Because there are explosions in space, aren't there? Supernovas and stuff, they're huge explosions, aren't they? But they're more like outbursts. Rather like rather like not like we see on Earth with like flames and stuff. Anyway, it's energy, isn't it, when all said and done? Sexy she, her, bums in sci-fi. You have to be there, them, bums. Sorry, mate. Anyway, she's under the spotlight, ready to sing a song. And uh, then we see a shadow. There we go. Du -du -du, it's James Bond. <laughs> uh, appear behind her. And, uh, you know, squat down and then get back up. And then she notices it. She says, ah, no, the alien's there. And then he sees he's behind the alien, his parker. And says, oh, my God. He said, get out of the way. Then we hear it over the radio. Get out of the way because they've got an open channel on their comm badges. Get out of the way. And she says, I can't get out of the way. I don't know why she can't, but she can't. Maybe she was paralysed with fear. I don't know. He wants to flame it with the flamethrower, apparently. But she's in, you know, he doesn't want to kill Lambert as well, does he? Anyway, so there it is. Um... Uh, oh, ah, by the way, on this, um, it's got its tail behind it, I think. But I think earlier on when we saw it hanging in the chains, uh, I forgot to point it out, uh, its tail was stuck to the front of it, as though it had a big, massive, long willy. <laughs> uh, its tail were on the front. Uh, I don't know why the ch I don't know why it had it on the front. I don't, maybe for its look otherworldly, I don't know. It's a Giga thing, maybe. But now they've put it on the back, as you know, where it should be, you know. Where tails generally go. But anyway. Uh, he's still telling her to get out of the way. Uh, there we go. He's smiling at her. He just, just says hello. He just wants a cuddle. That's all. And uh, Lambert, uh, not Lambert, Parker tries to intervene. And uh, it obviously senses he's, he's coming. He's coming. And it, it whips round with its tail. There we go. And whew, and whacks Parker and knocks him against the uh, whatever. Uh, and then it gets Parker. And um, <clears throat> there we go. He screams. Got older Parker, and then it's gonna, it's gonna turn his head into a. Um, uh, is it a watermelon? I think it's a watermelon, isn't it? <laughs> if we see it in a minute. Um, get out of the room. He's gonna show the watermelon. Come on, as as Ripley's running to the rescue. Oh no, we've missed the watermelon. I think it was watermelon. I'm sure it was. Anyway, uh, oh, and then it does the locomotion. Do the locomotion with me. Come on, baby, do the locomotion. <laughs> Just reminds me of it. Uh, telling tales, yes. Uh, st stuck in room 101 at the moment. I used to watch that. Uh, I watched a couple of them, that series. Um, I know it's from 1984, but um, that series, it, well, it used to be with Paul Merton, didn't it, originally? But then... Um, What's his face took over, didn't he? Um, oh, I forgot his name now. He was light bulb shaped head, the comedian. Um, oh god, <sighs> thingy and Badil. I forgot. It's Frank Skinner. Frank Skinner started doing, it and I really enjoyed that one. Is it still going? I've no idea. Anyway, there it goes. Doing the locomotion. Uh, let's make sure we're still going. 
because I've been doing clips. I said I weren't going to do little clips, didn't I? But uh, I'll probably get a copyright claim now. Anyway, so she's all scared, obviously. Parker's dead. Um, she's heading back. Is Ripley because she's the hero, and they keep calling her in the in the document. Um, yeah, in the documentary, they're saying she's she's the 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 main character or something like that. And I'm sure she's not. I'm sure she's a. I'm sure Tom Skerritt's, you know, above her. I know she. She's the final girl, essentially, isn't she? Because it's a it's a slasher movie in space, but instead of a mass mo murder, it's a monster, isn't it? So she's the final girl, is Ripley, when all's said and done. Uh, right. Uh, oh, yeah, she's doing the... Um, um, whatchamacallit? Yeah, that. <laughs> Self-destruct. And we can see it, we can read it, look. Danger. Emergency destruction system on activation. Ship will detonate in T-minus 10 minutes. Failsafe warning. Cut-off system will not operate after T-minus 5 minutes. Scuttle procedure. Right, punch. Nuclear bolt code number one. Verify bolt clamp release. Perform insertion of bolt number one to hold number one. Remove nuclear head. <laughs> Activate. Well, I don't know why I laughed at that. Activate push button switch. That's it's like um, translated instructions, isn't it? For like a chi you know, from something you bought from China or something. <laughs> uh, replace nuclear head. Verify secured. Verify. You know, it's um, what is it? I, I once had one. Of, Oh God, I mean, it, it, hilarious with the instructions like do do the push pull until it has all its strength and um fricicles, words like that. Anyway, verify detonation activated. Repeat for holds two, three, and four. And then it says caution something or other. And then it's in French for some reason. Don't know why. Just is. Maybe the maybe it's a Canadian ship. <laughs> It could be built in Canada. And then it says caution something or other. Uh, I can't read, it's too small for my stupid eyes. But beware static damage. I think static's the last thing you need to worry about. Yes, electro something. Da, 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 da. Precautions. Observe, observe precautions for handling electrostatic sensitive devices. So basically, you should have, um, you know, like make it, when you've. Fixing computers and stuff, you should have uh, one of them little little wire things that you clip onto the, like a metal thing to ground yourself. That's what you've got to do, isn't it? You've got to ground yourself before you blow the ship up. Anyway, Firefighter Quest says, I used to love watching Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mock the Week. Yes, yes. I just like Mock the Week. And Whose Line Is It Anyway? Um, code zero, zero, zero. Destruct zero. <laughs> code one... 1A, oh no, code 11A, and then 1B, 2B, 3, and then whatever, I can't remember. 11A, 2B, something like that, I don't know. Alien is so woke, strong whamming alert, yes it is. <laughs> anyway, so she's doing all this. She's getting ready to blow the ship up. Oh, there we're on the, um, the buttons inside that make no sense. I've no idea what any of these things mean. Just random words, trip. Agaric fly, particle beam abhort, pranic lift, 777. What does all this mean? Um, LE, L, LEB drift, Shakti excess. That's a st two Star Wars references before they were even think Shakti's in Star Wars and so is Padme. Did George Lucas do this? Is this where he got the words, the names from? Shakti and Padme. He got them from this film. I think he did. Rorim. Akasa. I don't... What? what morph. What, what? What does it all mean? Anyway, she's pressing the buttons. <laughs> yes, one, two, three, four, five. It's the same code that's on my luggage. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. Linger, Drew's pile, baffling. Anyway, so she does all that. I love this scene, by the way. I love it because it's all like clunky, chunky equipment and stuff and things popping up and you've got to turn screws and, and bolts and things like that. It's uh, it's cool and it's it's realistic. I don't know if it's realistic, but it has that 
the air of realism, doesn't it? In that it's things to do. It's gear porn, isn't it? That's what it is. To quote Paul Chato again, or Chato. How the hell do you pronounce his name? Paul Chato. He talks about gear porn. And that's what that's what boys like, isn't it, in films, space films and action films. You like your, your gear and equipment and stuff. So that's what we're having here. And there we go. The countdown's activated now. <coughs> Ship will detonate T minus ten minutes, says Mother. So right. Um so now she's got to head back to the shuttle. You think they put the shuttle a bit closer to the place where you blow the ship up, but anyway. Alien is like poetry. Tactile. I've no idea. But yes, it's like poetry because it repeats into Star Wars. <laughs> Pardon me. Anyway. I bet he did get those names from that. Unless they mean something else, but I don't know. In another language. Did I see something in the background there? I'll go back again. No, I didn't. It must have been, you know, imagination. I thought I saw something in the background behind it. it must have just been the light. Anyway, this is where she admits she finds Dallas again. Uh, she's in this area with the. Uh, ooh, looks like some kind of secreted resin. Yeah, but secret from what? Sci-fi Quest says, I would have tackled Sigourney if I was older. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean tackled? <laughs> I mean at the time, back in 1979. Um, anyway, looks like some kind of, yep, yep, it does. It looks like some kind of secreted res. But secret from what? Padme is just Persian for lotus flower. Cool, but still don't make, make sense why it's on that button <laughs> or that key or whatever it is. Anyway, right, so she's here, she finds Dallas, there he is. And uh, I think I to Ridley Scott, they're turning them into eggs. They're not using them as hosts for chest bursters, they're turning them into eggs somehow. Because uh, you can see there, it's starting to form around him, is the egg. And we see um, Brett as well, who is obviously dead. Dallas isn't dead, and he's going, ah, kill me but we see um is it going to show oh for god's sake ah where have i gone I've gone the wrong way must have, must have pressed the wrong where am i <laughs> have i gone too far where's what's happened here now all oh, right there get there get there get there what's happened here are we there right we're there now aren't we yes she's in here there right, we go I got lost then <laughs> on this big ship. Uh, looking for Brett. She sees Brett as well. She's um there's Dallas. Going, kill me. I mean she looks up there because she sees we see Brett as well up there, because she says Brett. And you can see he's like he's being in he's in an egg, he's turning into an egg. So that's what they're doing. And we see all goo and stuff coming out of it as well, as though it's like taking his fluids to form this egg. Anyway. Uh, I wasn't conceived in 79, though. Yes, you're all bloody young'uns, you lot. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm bloody 12. I was 12 in 1979. Anyway, maybe where Picard got the idea for space flowers, yes. Probably. Picard season one at the end. God. Anyway, so there they go. They're turning them into eggs. Uh, there we go. Oh, we get another... Look at the all the goo that's coming out. Secreted resin, perchance. Uh, but anyway, there you go. He's saying, kill me, in his voice. And uh, Remember, this is what we cut out of the uh, original uh, theatrical version. Uh, saying that it slowed the film down. Um, I think uh, Tom Skerritt himself said, uh, th they were in a countdown phase. You've got ten minutes to get off the ship. And uh, she's got to get there. And, and do all this stuff and fight the alien, blah, blah, blah. And this doing this in the middle of it slowed it down, the thought. But, you know, whatever. Uh, so she does. Anyway, so there we go. She burns him to death and um, and the rest of it too. So, right, so that gets all burnt. So off she goes. Looking sad. Looking sad. Uh, right, so she's heading to... Uh, the, oh, is this uh, uh, glycerin fingers? <laughs> she was covered in glycerin, apparently. Oh, that might be later. It's later on. 
to look all sweaty. She was covered in glycerin. And then she started breaking out in blotches. She picked up the cat and started breaking out in all these red blotches. And she thought, oh, God, I'm allergic to the cat. And she thought, they're going to fire me. And uh, it turned out she's actually allergic to the glycerin and cat hair combined. Uh, I don't know how they got round it, but... Uh, Anyway, right, so she's found the cat, it's in the container, and she heads back, and then um, she sees the uh, the alien. She comes round the corner in a minute. Uh, hang on. Uh, oh, she dropped the cat. So she's not sod the cat. I think she looks round and sees the alien. Here it is, coming round the corner. Uh, what it? Where was it? Bloody hell. She was the alien. I'm sure she sees it. Sure she does. Whatever. I'm sure she sees. She comes around the corner, sees the alien. She drops the cat. <laughs> uh, hang on. Where are we? Uh, apparently, in this version, the eggs could be converted to an egg and hatch a face hugger. Uh, the people changed to an egg. People did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. Great. Now I want to listen to Bush. <laughs> Um, George W. Bush or the 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 band Bush. <laughs> um, where were we? Uh, she sees the alien. She drops the cat. She heads. She's trying to turn off the um. There you go. The alien. There you go. Sees Jonesy and then just whacks the cat across the thing. The cat's fine. The cat's fine. And she's going to try. So she, the the alien's basically blocked off her route to the shuttle, uh, she can't get there, so she's got to try and go back now and deactivate the self-destruct, because she thinks she's trapped on the ship, and time's running out, look, she's 20 seconds left to do all the stuff in reverse, to turn it all off, but she's too late, uh, she wasn't in time, and it's going to blow up in five minutes now, uh, so she calls mother a biatch, and um, there you go, and then, uh, so she's got to head back now. I think this is where she's all all sweaty. I think it's that sweaty. Even the fingernails are sweating, uh, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, there we go. Uh, look, even the fingernails are sweating. Look. <laughs> um, so she's heading back. Uh, people say she's heading back for the cat. No, she's not. She just finds the cat along the way. She's left the cat behind. She sod the cat. She just finds the cat along the way, heading back to the shuttle. And um, there you go, Jonesy. So she gets to the shuttle. The alien's nowhere to be seen. Well, she gets to the shuttle soon. Uh, there we go. Ooh, look at all this pipe work. Look, all this pipe work and stuff in the shuttle. All this, look, it's all pipes. <laughs> Got one minute to get away. But the alien was following the lights to the shuttle, probably. It probably has the computer. Computer, can you tell me the way to the shuttle? And it'll be like on the Enterprise D, it'll be pointing the way. <laughs> uh, anyway, she's in inside the shuttle now, getting ready to go. So she straps herself in, there we go, off it goes. 29 seconds, oh! But uh, anyway, there we go, off she goes, heading out into space, away from the ship. Uh, there we go. And they get a countdown, and three, two, one, kaboom! And it all blows up. I'm going to go back again. There we see it. There we go. We've got one explosion. It blows up three times. I don't really know why. <laughs> um, Romulus will begin soon. A ship will fly past the shuttle and recover the big chap. Yeah. But it, you know, just ignore the shuttle. <laughs> it picks up, you know, it must have scanners or something. It picks up the alien, but not the shuttle. That can't be that far away, can it? But anyway. <sighs> so, anyway, it blows up once, and then it blows up again. Thusly. Uh, and then as she's waiting, it blows up. Oh, no, I don't know. Is it? No. And then it does it a third time. Um, hang on. And then, for some reason, the third one, there we go, becomes like a 2001 A Space Odyssey thing there, for some reason. Don't know why. It's a bit crap. 
The explosion affecting this is a bit crap. F the shuttle. <laughs> anyway, so she thinks everything's done and she's safe. You son of a gun, she says. And everything's lovely. She's escaped. And that's the end of the film, isn't it? So we might as well turn it off. So thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see this. Shall I press the button and make you think I've done? <laughs> but no, she's got to get down into her skimpies next. Bit like classic Doctor Who too. What the well, yes, the thing diddly ding a ding a ding bit well, bit like eighties Doctor Who, wasn't it? <laughs> uh there we go, she's stroking the cat. She didn't care about the cat before, did she, when she saw the alien and ran off, you know. And and the cat'll remember as well. <laughs> the cat'll remember. Anyway, she shoves the cat in the um in that thing, the whatever it's called, cryopod. And um and then she decides to just take all her clothes off. Apparently, this was Sigourney Weaver's idea, apparently. Um, she thought, you know, she wants to be super vulnerable. And what you're, you're most vulnerable when you're just in your, your underplugs, aren't you, essentially? I mean, she could have been naked, but, you know, that would have been, like, X-rated in America. Um, so she uh, strips down to her underplugs. There we go. Um, uh, would she have done that if, you know, if, if the three of them had made it, would they have all stripped down to their underplugs? Don't know. In front of each other. Anyway, see a bum there, look. Right, so she's uh, doing all, flicking switches and doing stuff, and uh, there we see this, oh, a bit of pipe there, but is it pipe? Because, um, because, um, there we go, it's not, it's the alien. And his fingers are stuck together for some weird reason. He's trying to be a Vulcan look and he can't do it right. <laughs> um, thousands just turned off the stream. Yes, because of my prank. The millions watching around the world. So you go to strip it down, I'll be in my room. She don't really do it for me, I've got to be honest. I mean, yeah, she's, she's a girl weaver, she's gorgeous, but, you know. I like a bit of mate. <laughs> I like a bit of mate on me women. <laughs> Eat some pies, love. Eat some pies. Anyway. Uh, so she goes running off uh, into this back area of the uh, the cabin. There we go, amongst the spacesuits that look really comfy. But anyway. Um, so she has a look out. And then we see the alien. And that reminds me. I know it's just because there's like a strobe light going for some reason. There's a strobe light going. And it makes the alien's hand look like. A bit like stop motion, uh, a little bit, but anyway, whatever. Um, there we go. It's just smearing its goo everywhere for some reason. Uh, but who would know? She's actually on a Klingon ship, isn't she? A D seven battle cruiser, obviously, because Klingons use English um, letters and numbers. <laughs> anyway, she's watching from this little room. And uh, as the aliens uh, just just hanging out in there, it's just waiting, you know. Maybe it didn't even know she were there. I, I, I'm not sure it does. Uh, I think it might have just been stretching or something like that. Maybe it didn't even know she were there uh, because it's just it's just sitting in there, just doing nothing. Uh, I like all types. Well, yeah, but you know, I'm just being like you know, my preferred type. <laughs> I'm not in any sort of east. Uh, anyway, she gets into this uh, this super comfy looking spacesuit, um, and there the alien's having a little uh, stretch of its mouth face bit. Um, there we go. Uh, she gets in this super comfy suit and uh, starts singing a little song to herself. You are my lucky star. Shakespeare was Klingon, so they kind of invented English. That's true. That's true. And I bet it just morphed into the 23rd century Klingon that we all know and love. But originally it was English. Because <laughs> uh, Kapla obviously comes from, you know, the Yorkshire term um, on Ilklimua Bartat. Because. Um, <laughs> Because they mean the same thing. Kapla means without a hat, which is uh, on Ilkrimua Bartat. 
What am I on about? I don't know. It's a no capla means success or whatever. Right. Anyway, whatever. Right. So she's getting in this super comfy space suit. Uh, she gets the helmet on. And then she's got her harpoon, Josh Temple, if he's still watching. She's got a harpoon here, look. A little a little tiny one for girls. A little girl's harpoon gun. That's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, with a sight on it. So you can like, you know, what's it got? Well, is it a sight or what? I don't know what it is. Uh, the alien from Species is hot, uh, especially when she was, well, I think only when she was Natasha Henstridge. Uh, she wasn't very hot when she was an alien, uh, particularly when the tentacles are coming out of her boobies. But uh, anyway. <laughs> well, that, I think that was Species, wasn't it, with tentacle boobs? Anyway. Right, what's she doing? Right, she's getting her um, um, harpoon gun ready and she's going to sneak out and start pressing buttons uh, because she wants to uh, flush out the alien. Uh, but she's using all gentle. She's singing You Are My Lucky Star, by the way. And she's uh, pressing buttons. I'm pressing imaginary buttons. You can't see me, but she's pressing buttons and doing this little little steam purge thing. That's, at first it's going all gentle. And she goes, looky, looky, looky. Uh, there you go, she's doing the jet. Gentle steam purge. Uh, does it two or three times, and then the last one, for some reason, is they're all like, tff, tff, tff. then when it gets to the alien, it's <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, uh, like that. Uh, so anyway, that that makes it come out. Um, uh, anyway, uh, that's species propaganda. What the tentacle boobs? Is it all right? What about machine gun jubblies? <laughs> anyway, the alien comes out. So obviously steam bothers an alien. Uh, if it is steam, I presume it's steam. I don't know what the hell it is. Um, or is it liquid nitrogen? I don't know what it is, but um, that, that flushes it out and makes it come out of its hidey hole. She's, you are my lucky star. And she's getting ready and she looks round and it's there behind her is the alien. So she hits the airlock thing door and the door opens up. There we go, the alien goes out, he's, he's blown out into space, it's not sucked out into space, it's blown out because the air is rushing from the um, from the shuttle into space, so it's blown out uh, from a high-pressure area to a low-pressure area. Anyway, so off it goes, but it's holding on for dear life, so she fires the harpoon, Josh Temple, uh, into uh, the... Um, into the alien. Luckily, all the acid for blood goes out with it. Uh, docking flaps. Oh, I just noticed that there. And there's some on the other side as well. <laughs> uh, how did he miss those machine gun jubblies? <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. Uh, anyway. So out it goes. And uh, the door closes... Uh, there we go. Trapping the uh, the harpoon gun, which we see at the beginning of Aliens. Uh, it sucks to be blown into space. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, where were we? Um, but it's not dead. Look, it can survive in a vacuum. It can survive. So it tries to, for some reason, I don't know how, where's it going to go? It's going to climb into the engine of the shuttle. But is there a way through into the ship through the engine? I don't know. I'm guessing the alien just sees a hole and it's going into it. Uh, so it heads in there, so she activates the shuttle's engines. Maybe this is what sends the shuttle off course, you know, out of the the areas where it'd be picked up because she fired the engines unexpectedly. I don't know. Um... Mr. H thinks there's a tracker on the harpoon slash spear. Oh. What, for Romulus? For, that's what they've picked up. Um, the, the, the bit that's in the, um, in the alien. Maybe so. Why would, why would there be a tracker? I don't know. Well, what they're, gonna, what, what they're tr tracking with the harpoon at Space Whales or something? Is it the, is it the what they call it? The Quake Quee Queg or something? <laughs> Oh anyway, where were we? Um, oh, actually, fires the engines. There we go. And 
I still don't kill the ale. You think it vaporises it, wouldn't it? But it doesn't. It just knocks it back. Uh, but it's only water. It's just water with a light. But it's supposed to be the engines. So off it goes. And we see it several times. Don't we? we see it uh, two or three times falling away from the ship. Uh, being pushed away. But uh, obviously the shuttle's bombing off now into deep space. Um, uh, so she settles down now. She's got a nice... Uh, uh, she must have had a bath or something, or a shower, if that's in there. She's all cleaned up, with nice clothes on, and this nice silk dressing gown. Um, yes, because the big chap is the same alien, we'll see. Mobius Dick. <laughs> uh, of course, Mobius being a um, um, uh, one of um, Ridley Scott's... Um, um, Inspirations, isn't it, for the for the film, for his storyboards and stuff that he did. Um, to, watching um, uh, Midnight's Edge today, their you know, their live show today, and Tom uh, were going on about uh, going on about Alien, curiously enough, and um, um, we're saying how Ridley Scott just came in and just directed the film, and you know, it were already done for him. I thought, well, yeah, the script were written, but. You know, he did add a lot. He did do all the storyboards, and you know, he was a driving force creatively in the film. Uh, you know, he didn't just point the camera. Tom sometimes talks out of his ass. <laughs> well, he's not getting angry for nothing. But anyway, here she is doing the last uh, log, uh, saying that all the crew's dead and the cargo and ships destroyed. A rather expensive piece of equipment. Uh, um, there we go. She'd reach the frontier in about six weeks. So it's the last starfighter crossover as well. So she's going to reach the frontier. So is she in, um, she's in Kodan space <laughs> at the moment. Until she gets to the frontier. Din, 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 din. Uh, but as we know, um, she's out a little bit longer than that. But anyway, so here she is in the uh, in the tube. What's this? Some kind of tube? And, uh, and then we cut to we have a dissolve, there we go, to space and the credits. And there we go, that's the end of Alien. And the, it is really the end of Alien now. Uh, an amazing film. It is an amazing film. A great, one of the greatest. 57 years more like, yes. Uh, why did they pick 57? Is it to do with Heinz? Was it sponsored by Heinz, 57 varieties? Don't know. But anyway... So there we go, that's the end of Alien. A great film, a great film. Uh, one of the best, one of the best. But uh, I do really like it. I know I'll take the mickey sometimes, but uh, I do really like it. Come on, let's do Aliens now. No, I'm going to bed. <laughs> you won't trick me, I'm not leaving. <laughs> it is really the end, honest. Um, yeah, so it's a great film. Everybody's... If you've not seen Alien, where have you been? For 30, I don't know how long, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 40, 42, 45 years now, isn't it? Um, 45 years, blimey, where have you been if you haven't seen it? Um, of course, it would spawn umpteen sequels, Aliens, which is just as good, but a different sort of film, isn't it? That's an action film. Um, yes, yeah, she's a sleeping beauty. Uh, or is she in... Um, is this, um, I forgot her name now, a character in Avatar. <laughs> and she's in her Avatar right now. Um, oh, I forgot her name. Never mind. Um, Sigourney, not you. Oh, right, fair enough. <laughs> Wonder what the Thermians thought about this film. Exactly. Well, I don't know, because it's not a series, is it? Would they class this as a historical document? Probably. Probably. Anyway. As I said, we got Aliens, which was an amazing film. Uh, she got nominated for an Oscar for that, didn't she? Did Sigourney. I don't think she won, but she got nominated for actress in a leading role. Uh, then with Alien 3, which was a trouble production, wasn't it? Uh, but it's still okay. And I like both versions, you know, the dog version and the cow version. They're both fine. Uh, a bit depressing. It's a bit... Um, uh, it's a bit dour, in it, and all that. But uh, it's an interesting story. But I think the documentary about the making of Alien 3 is probably more interesting than Alien 3 itself, to be honest. I mean, it was a bit mental, wasn't it, the original thing with Alien 3? It was going to be like a planet made of wood. 
Um, what? <sighs> Crackers. Uh, they have an Alien Resurrection, which I really like. I think Alien Re Resurrection gets a lot of heat. Uh, un you know, it's unwarranted. I really like Alien Resurrection. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and then we have the crossovers with Alien vs. Predator and all that. And then we have Prometheus, which I, I like Prometheus, but I like to think of it as not part of the Alien canon. And co Covenant's just rubbish. Anyway... Uh, Jonesy should be on her chest. No, my cat loves to sleep on my chest. Or oh, back when I'm asleep. Not so much now, though. Hey, don't forget Alien H2O. <laughs> yes, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and... Um, and um, I forgot his name now. The other... The alien that plays her son. I forgot his name now. Alien H2O. Oh, ah, yes, because there, yes, there were a Halloween resurrection, weren't they? <laughs> Just really like, twinged. Yes. Oh, dear. I get barely curled up between my legs. Not great when I get cramp. Yeah. Uh, princess doesn't really come into my bedroom very often, anyway. And when she does, she doesn't curl up with me. Not, she has done, but it's not very often. Uh, oh, she's not there now. She's bogged off out, hasn't she? Um... But she, she'll go into Aidan's room all the time and and try and curl up on his bed. And, I don't, and he keeps booting her out and being horrible to her, but she keeps wanting to go back in. Yeah, I'm the one that's all lovely and calm and nice with her and feeding her and stroking her and being lovely. And she won't come to me. In my, well, not in my room, anyway. She will when I'm sat watching telly and stuff. But uh, anyway, that's enough about cats. Uh, anyway, right, so that's the end of Alien. Hey, so what's coming up next? What's coming up next? Hang on, I'll uh, I'll get rid of this and I'll uh, oh we'll hang on we'll we'll go through these one more time. Which ones didn't we see? We didn't see that one, did we? Uh, oh no, it's just a uh, that's his signature. That bottom one, original designs by Ron Cobb, icons by Scotch and Soda. So there we go. Uh, refrigerated storage. I don't think we saw that, did we? we didn't see these either, did we? Or uh, or directions up, down, left, right. Maybe we did. Maybe we saw them. Didn't see exhaust or galley. Uh, or radiation hazard. Anyway. I still love them. Semiotic standard for all commercial, transstellar and heavy element transport craft. April 26th, 2078. Cool. Cool. Anyway. Right. Hang on, where am I? I'm there. There we go. Windgrace, Star Trek video, Sketch Sunday, Forgot What You're Doing Monday. Yes, what's coming up next is, um, uh, yes, um, Star Trek video tomorrow about um, Lower Decks and Star Trek Origins. Um, yep, yeah, then the Sketch Time on Sunday and Monday we're doing, if it's there, I hope it's there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Monday, we're doing Forbidden Planet. Great film uh, where we're heading on board the C-57D starship to the planet of Altair 4, where we meet Robbie the Robot and Monsters from the Id and all that stuff. And um, and I've decided... Oh, where are we here now? Oh, no room for stuff. Um <laughs> uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, sci-fi question. My mattress is on the floor at the moment. Need a bed frame soon. That'll solve it. Crikey. Crikey. Uh, I'm thinking of starting the watch-alongs again next week. Yay. More late nights for me. <laughs> uh, Star Trek Origins won't happen. I hope not. We've had Star Trek Origins. It were called Enterprise. Uh, anyway. Next week, next week's Friday night appointment with you, I've decided, because Aidan's kind of asking for these back, uh, we're doing Ginger Snaps, the first one. Um, uh, it's a good film starring Catherine Isabel and the others. I forgot the bloody names. Emily Perkins and Mimi Rogers. Uh, a wee wolf film. I like Ginger Snaps. It's good. So that's next Friday. Right. Right. If anyone is looking for something to listen to, X-1 is wonderful old school radio sci-fi. Is that on YouTube? Um, I will look into it. Well, I'll look into it now, then. So I did. <laughs> Let's have a look, then. Let's get rid of that. Um, is it on YouTube? I'll look on YouTube. X minus one. Let's have a look. What the heck? 
Don't make me go off on a tangent like I did on Wednesday and ended up bloody looking through my photos for an hour. <laughs> um, I don't know. X minus one, 1955. That's podcasts. Is that is that what it is? Uh, I've been listening to it on and off. Yes, YouTube, it's actual old broadcasts. All oh, right. There's playlists and stuff and all that jazz. Uh, let's have a look. View full playlist. X minus one, Dr. Grimshaw Sanitarium, The Velt, etc. Um, right, okay. I uh, will have a, a listen, a little listen to that and see what it's like. Right. What's happening here? Sorry, I just noticed. <laughs> uh, somebody's just commented on one of my videos, the Gina Carano one. I like the cut of your jib, sir. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, right. Right, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Right. But I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Right. Uh, uh, been listening to it on and off. Yes, but it's, uh, it's actually old broadcasts. Uh, X minus one was a half hour science fiction radio series broadcast from April 24th, 1955 to January 9th, 1958 in various time slots on NBC. Right, let's have a listen to them and see what they're like. And if they're rubbish. I'll say, Wind Grace, that X minus one were ruby. <laughs> but I bet it into it's cool. Right, we'll leave it there. Hang on, let me move that back. Oh, we'll leave it there. So, thanks, Wind Grace, and Sci Fi Quest, and uh, Josh Temple. Uh, he popped in, didn't it, and popped out again, I think. <laughs> um, was there anybody else that I didn't notice? Oh, I asked Mage Frey, that mysterious man from Twitch. Never see him and Wind Grace in the same room at the same time. For some reason. Um, uh, it's Josh Temple over there. Yes. And I think that was it, wasn't it? Oh, and Josh Kanapke. Joshua Kanapke mentioned, I think, uh, several days ago. Hell yeah. Uh, and we haven't seen him tonight. So <laughs> I think he was excited for this one. And he hadn't turned up. Must have been busy doing something else. Living his life. Living his life. Uh, right. Uh, some of it is not PC. Lol. Well, I imagine from the 50s. Lots of telling women to stop being hysterical. And all that jazz. Uh, one of the world's OG radio broadcasts will be a good listen. Yes, I've listened to that before. And uh, it's, it's, it's all right. I, but I prefer Jeff Wayne. I know that wasn't a radio thing. but <laughs> uh, Take care, one and all. Great stream, Steve. Take care. Stay safe. See you next time. And... Um, What's the, um, <clears throat> may the Schwartz be with you. Uh, I think Josh Temple said he got a new job and would be spotty. Yes, he did. He did said he got a new job, didn't he? Yes, and congratulations again. <clears throat> right, we'll leave it there. I'm losing my voice now. Uh, that's two, three-hour streams, bloody one week. Unbelievable. Right, so, thanks for watching. Don't have nightmares. And until next time... Oh, wherever you are, look after each other and all that jazz. Until next time. Hang on, somebody just, I think somebody just said something else. 708 subs, well done. It was 709 earlier on. <laughs> and then somebody's obviously unsubscribed. For some reason, later. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, thanks for watching, wherever you are. Look after each other. Until next time, I'll save you.